buddy. All right, here we go. And I haven't shown up. Well, we're, we got most <laughs> of the way there, Steve. You're there. Hello. Hello, friends. I'm assuming everyone can hear me. Let's Hope see you're if we all can doing get Trav in here. Trav. Who, who comes to this to, to see Trav? I don't know. Let me stop. Oh, I know what it is. Let me... Uh... Can I not... Yeah, I'm going to turn off my camera up there. That'd be... That's what we needed to do. Yep. Can't be Any looking at now. I should be showing up over here. Hello. Mm. Hello. <laughs> I know I'm I know I'm in here, man. Come We've on. seen you. I am in here. Let me see. Let me activate her there. What about now? There we go. Missed a round go. two saying very nice things. Oh my gosh, round two. Is he saying nice things? Yeah. Jeez Louise, he, well, we finally He was saying it. you were handsome and he could only see a black screen. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you everyone for your patience. We're only starting 18 minutes late, and uh, I'll, I'll consider that pretty good. We started, what, yeah. 30 minutes early trying to get going, so not too bad. Heck yeah. Had some thunder, had some lightning, which is a. It, you know, that's what this is going to be. This is going to be the Thunder and Lightning show tonight, you know? True. What are true, you true. sipping on? Well, it's a nice iced Americano. Um, the same thing I drink every single day of my life. Wow, that's and probably going to kill you. absolutely delicious. You're going to die young. But, right. Well, the problem is that this... We're riding this one out. All right. I had a bit of a hiccup there. I hope you said nice things. We're back though. We're good. I gotta <laughs> because I had to do a restart. I have nothing I was going to say or do open. So let me open up some sheets and I'll go ahead and ask the folks if they can hear and see well. I don't see anybody's streaming complaints of any sort, so I assume it's okay. Yeah. So, folks, this is Game Collection Showcase. This is part one. We planned fifty parts of this. We have giant collections. <laughs> Uh, no, there's going to be four. Today we're going through all of our Sony stuff, which Steve has way more of than I do. This is going to be mainly the Steve show. And, no, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, it's going to be mainly the Steve show. But there, toward the end, I promise, we're going to get into some to some weird weird. And I can't wait for that. That's actually something I'm really excited for. I want you to hold it up close to the camera, twirl it for us, work it. <laughs> I want to see all that weird stuff you have. So... Mm. People are probably saying, like, okay, well, I've never seen Trav before. I only see 8-bit footage on this channel. That's fair. So I'm Trav. I'm the Nest friend. Who's the guy over there to your right, my left, oddly, because of the way cameras work? That's Steve. He goes by Blink, a.k.a. Blinkoom. He does a lot of twitching. But more importantly than Twitch or anything else that he does, he's also my co-host on the Polykill podcast. That is the single most important thing Steve contributes to this universe, is being on the Polykill but podcast. That might actually be true. I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you agree. Um, but yeah, so the Polyco Podcast, It's you see there's a logo over there somewhere. You can listen to it. It comes out every other Tuesday. Steve, how would you describe Polyco? Uh, I mean, ostensibly, it's about playing and beating video games, but I think it's mostly an opportunity for the two of us to take little jabs and make fun of each other, mm -hmm. kind of under the guise of video games. Yeah. Video yeah. game guys under the guise of video games. Mm -hmm. Well said, well said. But yes, we do have we have a lot of fun. We talk about you know some collecty things, but mainly playing those games. And uh, what we don't get a chance to do very often is show off what we have on these shelves. And a bit of a deal with Steve and I is that we've never met the dude. I've never gone into his house. I've never stepped into his game room <sighs> and smelled his plastic. I've never ran my hands down the... I've been over this. I've never ran the, my hands down the spines of his PS2 cases or his, his Vectrix screen. I've never knocked on it boom, 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 like I've always wanted to. But this will be as close as I get to that. I mean, that, that, that works for me, right? What we can do is we can do this, and then, you know, maybe sometime in the future, if we haven't gotten sick of each other, we can meet up, we can do it in person, and we can compare, see which one we like more. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people are very disappointed that I've gotten rid of the mullet, and uh, I have a, I have to go to a wedding next week, and so I I did a little little cut. But no, we had a mullet, folks. We really did. There's a picture out there. In fact, 
I saw PD Puff was in the chat. She's seen the mullet firsthand. <laughs> she got to see the mullet up close. So uh, the mullet was here. Now it is now gone. That's uh, that was a that was a pandemic mullet. You know, we got our shots. We're good. We got the mullet. We got the mullet is in the past. This is actually what I look like 99% of my life. The mullet and the beard and the <laughs> and the handlebar mustache. That was a face. That was a total face. Okay. Um, did, did I cover all the bases? Who were we? We're Nest Friend and Steve. I, we told them who you were. We do podcasts. Uh, we, we mainly just watch Pete Dora, which has got us really excited to do what we're doing today. We're huge Pete Dora fans. Yep. Um, yeah. And so today you're watching a bunch of Sony stuff. So... Like I said, this is going to be four parts. Um, why so many? Well, mainly it's Steve's fault. He has a lot of weird, and I keep calling them weird. I don't know, does that offend you, that most of your consoles are weird? No, I think that it's fair to say that they're weird consoles. I also, yeah. I'm really excited to get to that point and for like the illusion of all of these consoles to come crashing down on you. They're, they're going to be a different experience than you're anticipating, I think. I'm excited either way. Steve, when did you start collecting video games? When did you say, you know what I'd like to do? De dedicate at least a room, room and a half to my ha of my house to just hoarding plastic that I'll only play about 5% of in my life, but it'll cost me almost everything I make. <laughs> when did you decide that this was something that you wanted to do? Okay, first of all, I've played already more than that. Well, more than 5%. I, I would say 25 to 30% or so I've beaten, but... Okay. I, that's a, it's a hard question, right? Because uh, there's not like a definitive origin story. I just never got rid of anything that I ever bought, and then I just got increasingly interested in weird consoles and digging through libraries to find cool games and stuff like that. So I went from having one shelf on the wall in my bedroom when I was in high school to uh, the very <laughs> the very to, to give you an idea of the type of person I am and the collector I am. The very first paycheck I ever made at my first part-time job, I got like a hundred dollars. I was working at a grocery store. My sister, who's older than me, she picked me up. We drove directly down to Circuit City, and the very first thing I bought was a copy of Prism Chapter One: The Dark Unicorn on PS2. Wow! To bring that home and play it. So, um, from there, one shelf turned into two, turned into a closet, turned into the corner of a basement, turned into a room for the stuff. So just it's just a never-ending lifelong battle what about you well i gotta ask have you ever traded anything in did, did you have a phase of let's keep GameStop's used section restocked and let me get some new new or did you always keep it i i've traded stuff in but not stuff like i've never traded stuff in before i could afford things in order to buy the next best thing like i've i've always held on to all my stuff so all the N64 games that I grew up with I have, all my Genesis games I grew up with I have. Um, yeah, I didn't, I don't I never really like the idea of trading stuff in. So in, in some ways I have a little bit of a edge up because I don't have to recollect a lot of my childhood. I've recollected some cardboard that I lost or threw away in my childhood, but of course. Um, yeah, I, I never really got rid of stuff. Yeah, I did. So I didn't actually start collecting and I can remember when I did it. It was 2010. So at this point, I had already traded in mostly all of my PS2 stuff that I had, uh, all of my PS3 stuff. In fact, to this day, and today you, people, folks are going to find out, spoiler alert, I have no PS3 things at all. So that's <laughs> that's going to be just all Steve. Because uh, at that point, I just said, you know, I want to try the 360. So I sold all of my PS3 stuff and got some 360 stuff. But uh, around 2010, I moved out of uh, a living situation and lived on my own, and I just got bored. And uh, I just liked the way it looked to have all of my things in one place. And, and I started, uh, you know, I went back home and, and found my old consoles, you know, my NES stuff, stuff that I didn't get rid of that had just been at home. Uh, not, the stuff I, I had with me in college was just, it was currency. Like, I'd buy a game, trade a game in, just constantly. But, uh, you know, the NES stuff I glommed onto, kept all that stuff. So, seeing all that stuff together, I was like, you know what I want to do? And I bet nobody's doing it. I said this in 2010. I said, I bet nobody out there <laughs> starting a video game collection. Everyone's probably still doing baseball cards, I bet. I don't know. Uh, stamps, maybe. People are collecting stamps. Pictures of butterflies or something. Turns out I was wrong. It's a huge community of people collecting these things, and it's it's drove, driven the price up exorbitantly in the last six months, which I'm, which I'm sure will come up today. So, uh, for me, my collection has been about 11 years going, but it's it's made it's 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 really made ground in that time, I think. But no PS3. 
<laughs> you'll get you'll get one eventually. I will say, right around that 2010 2011 time frame, um, that's around when I discovered like the community of collectors, like the the YouTube and the Twitch scene that you're familiar with today. Before then, I was just kind of doing it on my own. So when I found all that stuff, it was more like, oh my gosh, there are so many more people out there like me than I thought there was. I thought I was just like this stubborn, weird game player. Um, and and I'm sure you hate when I when I slash anyone brings this up, but one of the earlier things I remember finding in collectory space was a set of interviews you did with other collectors on the Polykill uh, channel on the Polykill feed. That's right. That's right. That's well, that's a good thing to bring up. So I did these collect calls where I, uh, they were called collect calls because people were collecting and I wanted to talk to them. That apparently didn't land with many people. I thought that was a great you know, pun. Name. Excellent name. No 100% guy. great name. People are like, what are you calling it that? Because you, you, you're using Skype, right? Yeah, I'm not calling them collect. Like, are you out of your <laughs> mind? No, I didn't dial 1010321. But anyway, so I talked to some people about their collection. Because I was very curious. What do people do? What are their habits? People have interesting collection habits. I'm sure we'll get into it a little bit. I want to acknowledge the chat a little bit. And I still see there is a lot of mention of the mullet I no longer have. And I really I really do hate to disappoint people. You know, if we could have scheduled this a year, or uh, I'm sorry, a week earlier, uh, we, you know, it'd still be rocking it. But uh, unfortunately, no. There are pictures, though. They exist. Uh, maybe I'll post them up on Instagram there. But there was definitely a mullet of sorts. I'm a little quiet, says Eventual Nits. Well, let me let me get back here. I'm leaning up. I'm all excited. Let me get back here on the old microphone. Let me know if that's better. Uh, and Caleb finally made a funny joke. That was cool. All right. <laughs> Save uh, that for your podcast, Caleb. Yeah. yeah, copy and paste that. Put that down somewhere, Caleb. That's pretty good. Caleb there, it's uh, Play Games, Think Games. He's no, he no longer goes by Caleb. He's the artist formerly known as. Mm. All right, so let's just jump into that PS1. You want to? You ready let's, for some PS1, I'm, buddy? I mean, let's, we can just dive right in. So let's I kind of structured on. mine. Hold on, hold on. I gotta, I, I'm new to OBS. I got to figure out what to show first. Um, <laughs> hold on a second. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I got them, I got them uh, on buttons. What does that do? There it is. Hey, what's this? <laughs> I have Can to you take this? your word on it because uh, <laughs> the stream comes in a solid like minute and a half late. This solid is... like ten seconds, fifteen seconds late. Yeah, great, great. This is your PS One collection. I'm showing yes. a whole pic a whole picture of it. You got three shelves there. All three of those shelves bending under the weight of the jewel case. I'm sure that's not a perspective <laughs> trick. No, they all bend, and that's true of all the consoles. As we continue to do these, that will continue to be true. All right, and there's also let's see how many we got here. There's uh, you can't see this still, but I'm going to describe to you a uh, SquareSoft Final Fantasy. Uh, I'm going to call it a stand-up. Mm, oh yes, a hundred percent. So I just threw that in there because even though we're not going to be showing it today, one of the other things I really like collecting is memorabilia, standees and like the ephemera around games. So I just wanted to, to throw that in there to encourage other people to track that stuff down too, because it is very cool. Like if you're not completely burnt out on cardboard around your games, get some to just stick <laughs> over in the corner as well. Now I like it, I like that. Uh, the cardboard then, around your cardboard. You can't have enough cardboard. And then of <laughs> course there is the picture of what I believe are your imports. They are screwed, up, screwed among your carpet. Yeah, and that's not even all of them, because it would not be that interesting of a picture if it had all of them. They'd be too small, but the PS1 is a really good system for imports. PS1 and PS2 are both actually really good. So uh, I I think right now I'm actually a little more active in looking for import stuff, but just if you if you feel like you've seen everything on PS1, look at some of the Japanese-only releases, because there's tons of neat things out there. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I, I have a very small number, but uh, you have some pretty fun ones there. Uh, I mean, are you going to be showing off any of these? Because I already have questions about, like, Linda Cubed. <laughs> I don't have Linda Cubed, but I grabbed a small handful of these to show you. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. Let's let's go to the... Let's roll the be some beautiful bean footage of this... Um, PS1 collection. So again, you can't see this uh, live uh, going. I slowed it down a little bit. You had it going so fast. I was like, what, what's, that? what's this? What's that? But you can see them as you go through there. You got all the Digimon worlds and, uh, you know, and the frame rate on this is going to make give someone uh, 
epilepsy, I'm sure, because I've slowed it down. And it's just jarringly <laughs> catching. But uh, I wanted to just be able to see all the titles for myself. But you got a lot of stuff here. And I think when it comes to the PS1, you could always have too much, I think. There's what, 1,900 of those things? There's there's a lot, yeah. And you'd think that I would have like an exact number of games that I have for you. But I don't. I track my games in two different places. Uh, one of them is Backloggery, which does some interesting math where it combines, like, it counts compilations of games, each as their own game. So if you have, like, a bundle pack of, like, five arcade games in one, like a Namco Museum, it'll count it as five. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also have it in game value now, but that doesn't have imports. So I have somewhere between 170 and 200 PS1 games, probably around 180, 185. Uh, and there's still plenty that I'm looking to pick up. It blows my mind that a collector would not know the number of games <laughs> in their collection. And that blows my mind. I don't understand how you just don't always have the numbers handy. Like I'm, I'm all, I'm a baseball card when it comes to my collection. If you ask me how many games <laughs> I got, in something I, I got it. I got it ready to go. It, the The problem is the imports. It's always the imports. Uh, the sites that I've lobbed onto never had them in their database. And I never started using one of those sites that lets you manually add in addition to pulling from a database. So Mm. long term, I think I'm going to just add a third place to track, which is probably just a Google sheet that I can make exactly how I want it. But it's around 185. I'll respect it. I definitely respect it. I've noticed here, and what people will see different with my collection, I think you're 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 much more particular in general about your collection. And again, I appreciate yeah. that. I'm more of a get what I get. I don't care if it's the greatest hits. Uh, you know, I, I care about condition, obviously, if it's playable. Especially, I'm, I'm very particular about uh, the disc-based stuff when it comes to condition, for sure. But I'll, you know, I'll take a little bit of a beat-up case. Greatest hit stuff, again, doesn't bother me. Uh, but you have a very curated collection here of things that I assume that you like and uh, things that are not greatest hits. Yeah, I don't do greatest hits, unless the greatest hits version is the best version uh, of the game. Like... When we get to PS2, I have the Greatest Hits version of Silent Hill 2 because it has extra content on it. But um, I don't do Greatest Hits when I can avoid it, which is always. And I don't add everything. Like, I'm not trying to get a full collection of most things. I I don't want to say I'm not going for a full collection of anything, but certainly not for any of the main systems. I'm not. So if I add a game to my collection, it either has to be... There's like a few general rules that I use. It either has to be uh, something I want to play which is obvious um it has to be something that or it has to be something that is like really um significant to the library in some way where like uh what's like like a brain age on ds or something like that something that maybe i don't really want to play but like it's so representative of what that console is and what made it important that i might keep it or the third and probably the second biggest reason is uh, just that it's interesting in some way. Um, so interesting, <laughs> like Hungry Bill says, interesting jank or funny or novel or even, you know, uh, if it's if what's interesting about it is that it's like part of a series and it completes a series. That It's a very loose criteria, but that's like kind of my catch all for mm-hmm. even if I'm not necessarily looking to play it, there's a reason to have it in the collection. So it's. There's logic to it, although the logic is just in my brain at the time when I decide if I'm going to add it or not. Yeah. Well, for me, I'm always looking for deals. So even if I don't want it, but it's a quarter, I'll take it home. <laughs> you know, that's that's a that's a little orphan Andy that needs a home. I got it. I got you. I also have some weird stuff. I like the weird. Um, but yeah, I think you have a very curated and nice collection. I can't say that about mine. Mine is very haphazard. Let's see it. I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to cut to it now. Let's let's roll the beautiful bean footage. Let's see. Yeah. Let's play it. Let's play it here for the folks. So, again, you can't see this, Steve. I'm very sorry. Let me describe it to you. Let me run down through this Chrono Cross clock trick. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, but, no, I, I don't mix my greatest hits right in, dude. I'll make it look like a jack-o'-lantern's mouth with all the green in there. I don't care. You know? Those uh, games. I, I mean, I, I respect that it doesn't bother you. I, I would at least put them all together at the end. I think a nice, 
a nice block of greatest hits at the end can actually look pretty classy, but yeah. breaking it up like that, oh, I, you know, I, I guess, tried that. No. I tried that. You know what? You know what made it worse for me? And some of my Final what? Fantasies were, and some of them weren't. Now, now there's. Oops. Now I hit my microphone with my backhand. Now they're separated. Now I got Final Fantasies over here in the black section. Final Fantasies down here in the green <laughs> section. That's no good. I gotta have all the Final Fantasies together, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. It, if, if they look terrible all together, we gotta keep them together, right? I think so. I mean, I. <laughs> I, I I'm know. seeing two copies of Road Rash. You keep in both the black label and the Greatest Hits Road Rash in there. It's, a, it's technically a variant, right? Oh, are, so you're a variant guy? Interesting. No, not. I don't go. I don't try <laughs> for it. But if I have it, yeah, why not? There's a Ninja Turtle holding everything up. Everybody likes that, right? Yeah. Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, I, I don't see that one yet, but I'm sure oh, I'll get sorry. to that Ninja Turtle. Spoiler alert: There's a There's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle in your future. All right, let's um, <laughs> let's cut that out. Let's go to. I have. I think I have pictures here. Added in. People thought they lost this, but now we're back because I didn't add that to the scene. So we're okay. <laughs> we're all right. I was just talking about these two. I don't care about uh, condition here. These a uh, one's a beat up. One uh, one isn't. I've never played either of them. They're just my imports. I got two. Steve has twelve. We're cool. It's cool. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's. I, I kind of want to look up this Potestas game. I don't know what this is, but I'm interested. Me too. I kind of want to look it up too. Oh, I do have it. I could just play it, but I'd rather look it up first. Last thing I'm going to show here, I do like demo discs, and I've just recently started this little demo disc collection, so um, here I am flipping mm. slowly through a binder of demo discs. You got your Pizza Huts, you got your PS Magazines, you got uh, you know some, some PS Underground. Um, there's a random 3DO one that snuck its way in there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty I respect cool the demos. That Pizza Hut demo that you showed is the only demo disc that I think I have across the entire collection. That's because I, I remember, I remember getting that demo disc from Pizza Hut and like playing the ever living snot out of it, playing Final Fantasy VIII and Ape Escape and Tony Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, man. And that's the thing. I, I, I have ran through some of the demo discs, and unfortunately, like twelve of them have the exact same games on them over and over and over again. Like I really yeah. wanted to try out some some weird stuff, maybe some things that never made it, but no, it's always Jet Moto. Like always Jet. Moto. <laughs> it's always. That's true. True. Okay, let's go back and forth a little bit. Do you want to start with the? Uh, why are you smirking? Are people making yucks in my chat? What do we got here? I mean, people are always making yucks. I don't think you can worry too much about that. People, wow, people got really upset about the sound. I just didn't put the. Uh, I just didn't put our audio in the in that scene because this is my first day at stream stream place okay so do you want to go first we can go back and forth sharing uh some some yeah. uh i guess ones we're proud of yeah so i've got my i'm treating this almost like an episode of polykill i've got my top five uh basically it's my most expensive i'm not going to say it's my most rare because rarity and cost are two very different things and the rarest one would probably be weird uninteresting games so i've yeah. got my my biggest hitters i've got five do you have something comparable or no i uh i do i'm, I'm technically six but two i'm gonna lump together so oh okay uh I'll tell you what, let me go first then all right so my number uh my number five spendiest boy is this nice looking copy a Valkyrie profile, oh. which might be near to you. Uh, so I got this. I remember most getting most of these. This one uh, was one of the first times I ever bought something on eBay 
where there was no pictures at all. It was just like a stock image. And I think it was $80. And I was pleasantly surprised because when it first came, it didn't have a manual. And I don't remember ever picking one up, but I have one now. (laughs) So at at some point I must have like bought a second copy, stolen the manual and put it in here and sold the other one off. Or maybe I got lucky and found just a manual, but I think I would have remembered that more. So yeah. uh, Yay. Yay for a complete Valkyrie profile. That is pretty good, man. That's a good one. Very cool. All right. Uh, Let me look here. This one, this one on the top, let me switch to me. This one on the top is a really fun story. This is the only long box PS1 game that I have. This is In the Hunt. Ooh, this is one that I don't have and that I want. It's a long box. So the interesting story about this is that my wife really loves to yard sale. Mm. Some, some places call it tag sale, garage sale, whatever. She likes to get up around 7, 7.30. She likes to beat people to putting their signs up. She likes to be standing in their yard before they're ready to go. <laughs> and I don't. Uh, I like yard selling, but I'm a more of an 8.30, 9 o'clock kind of starting guy. So a couple Oof. times I don't get to go with her, and that's fine. So one time she goes out, and uh, she stops by this garage sale that is probably a mile and a half from our house. She knows I collect video games. She's always got an eye out. She's not got a keen sense for what's expensive or not. She doesn't even know really what I have and what I don't. But she knows that if something seems like less than three three to five bucks, there's no harm in getting it just in case. So mm-hmm. she sees this and a uh, complete in box power pad on the NES, which is coming uh, in a later a later Sunday wow. night. She picks that up for nine dollars and this for one dollar, ten dollars all together. Wow! This, uh, and this was uh, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. And at the time, this game was going for about a hundred bucks, the long box version. She got it for one dollar, and it was the only My. game he was selling. He was selling a box, <laughs> clean box power pad, one of the rarest PS1 games. So at the time, this actually was maybe the most expensive uh, and sought after PS1 game. It has since been surpassed through panty prices. Uh, it's it's. It's still pricey. It's not technically in my top five, but it was on the cusp and enough to share. But this was really cool. My wife just saw it and uh, said, I bought it because I've never seen a PlayStation game come in a big box like that, and I thought you'd like that. I was like, I, I do. I do like it. It's good shape, too. Mint, minty on the inside. A little bit of a flappy situation here, but no big. No big deal. You can just glue that one back down. Glue it back I, I garage sale pretty regularly, and I don't know that I've ever had, like, that good of a score so she's already beating me i i will say i j- i had a week off recently and i went garage sailing on thursdays which normally i can never go until a saturday because i work oh well at thursday friday whenever the first day is i will say i had so much better luck going that first day than i ever have on a saturday that it kind of spoiled me for going to garage sales on saturdays now this year, I, fe- I feel way less motivated because I'm like, I know how much stuff is already gone mm. by the time Saturday rolls around because I was the one scooping all that stuff up Thursday and Friday. I hear you, dog. I hear you. Uh, I did want to mention, we were Ugh. talking stats earlier. You said you had about 185. I'm about 143. We're pretty close on this one. I think this will we be the closest, close. yeah. closest we'll be. So uh, what's your what's your next one? What's your next proud one? So my, my number four boy. Number, your number four boy. Where do you keep it? And do you lock your doors? <laughs> uh, so this is actually like kind of rapidly becoming one of the more expensive games on the console. Tail Concerto. Never heard of this. this. This is one of the few games I've ever bought off of Amazon. And I, w- I should have gone back and pulled the old Amazon listing to, to suss it out, but uh, I, I think I paid like 50 or 60 bucks on Amazon and I was real nervous because you don't on Amazon there's not a lot of details like they don't most of the time they don't have a picture they usually don't even have a good description but it, that was a good deal at the time and so I kind of took the blind buy on it uh, and I ended up getting it for that and now this is like many many hundreds like we're, we're probably talking in two to three hundred at this point it has the uh, the old Atlas logo so it gets the Atlas tax bump but it's actually, I haven't beaten it. I've played it just a little bit, but it's pretty fun. You like control these little animal characters and you're hopping around inside a mech suit. Um, wow. It's, uh, it, it's really fun. 
sounds fun. Again, I've never heard of it. I mean, that's true for most PlayStation 1 games for me. It's a, it's a frontier. You know? There's some systems, mm-hmm. like the NES specifically, uh, the, the Super NES, Genesis, like that library, I would, there are games in there. I, I don't think I would be surprised to see any name you threw at me. But with the PS1, I'm always like, what? What is that? I, PS1 and PS2 are exactly like that. And that's why I was sort of harping on imports, and I will a little bit later here too is because even once you feel like you somehow have a handle on these consoles, which you probably don't, you open up the import world and it like triples the size and you're back at square one again. It's just an endless, uh, endless font of discovery. It's true. It's true. My next ones here I'm going to lump together. I think they're going for pretty close to the same amount these days. You know, I don't really know. I just kind of went by feel. But uh, those are the the Breath of Fire 3 and 4. Let me nice. switch over nice, to the nice, nice. trap screen here. I should have done that for you. I I neutered your concerto chair. You were small. You could have been big like me mm. right now. I'm huge. Um, <laughs> three and forty. Well, where do I hold these things? I need to do this. Three and four. Man, cameras are hard, right? Uh, pretty cool though. It was cool to get these. I got these from a guy in a Discord there. And another one that's coming up, I got from him uh, as well. Uh, I really like this series. I only played the first one, but it was recently. And uh, I knew hmm. immediately, I was like, well, I need to I need to start getting those other ones if I like this one so much. I still don't have the second one. But, uh, you know, it's nice to, to, you know, have friends in the Discord or just friends that you can buy some some games off of. It's always kind of nice. Get a good deal that way. Get Cash in that friend discount. Like, are you really going to burn me? We're friends. You going to hit me with the full price charting <laughs> price or are you going to hit me with a little bit of a bro discount? I got a bro discount. So I'm pretty happy about that. Can't wait to play those. Yeah. And good games, too. So, um, yeah, I, I always love stuff that comes from people I know. Yeah. yeah. In fact, You're pulling out another let, me sh- one here, let me show you with my next one. Okay. So, my my number three here is a nice, beautiful looking copy mm. of Swakodin 2. There you go. Wonderful RPG. Very fun. So, the, the lovely eventual Nits that's in the chat right now got Who's me this. That? I I forget when exactly. She might remember because she doesn't have a broken, uh, uh, like, cricket brain like I do. But she got me this for either Christmas, birthday, or anniversary, one of the gifting holidays. And uh, this is a game that I wanted for a long time, but it's always been a spendy boy. Even before every game was $100 because of everyone collects and, and COVID prices, this was always, always, always a spendy boy. Yeah. And, uh, it just happened to be one that she played growing up. Like she happened into it, even though it's relatively uncommon. And uh, she was like, "Well, he wants it. I like it, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna pick him up a really nice looking copy." And like everything in the collection, it has basically just sat and tripled in price since she had to buy it. So she is, uh, she's wonderful. And this is not the last time a story of that nature is gonna show up. Oh, you love to hear that, yeah heard a lot about that series and our friend Pam cannot be tamed. I think she's done a video or two within the series. So one I need to try. It's a really good RPG. I like it a lot. Very cool. All right, coming up. One that uh I didn't know was heavily sought after these days, because I think I got it for pretty cheap way, way back. It's Parasite Eve 2. Uh evidently it's it's fetching a high dollar these days. I don't think it's really that rare. <laughs> I really? I just I was looking up on some things and saw some prices and I was like, "Hello, Pete." I said that out loud. I said, "Hello, Pete." Uh, what's <laughs> going on here? Uh, because you know the first one grows on trees. You know, if you walk into any game store looking for PlayStation stuff, you're going to trip and fall over a Parasite Eve. Second one, I admit, a little harder <laughs> to find. But um, of course, mine's got a cracked case. The way I like it, nice and dingy, real real, real piece of work. This old yeah. game. Uh, I have played a little bit of this one. I think I got about 85% of the way through and got real stuck. And it's scary, and you don't want to be stuck and scared. That's never fun. So I've not had the gumption to go back and, <laughs> and uh, get out of that scenario. But um, I think it's pretty heavily sought after. Or either that, I made a mistake and got to show it off here anyway. But that's okay. I, I don't want to uh, like test your your price memory here. But I'm surprised because I've never thought of that as a super spendy boy. Do you know like roughly... Uh what it's going for right now let me pull it up let's wait with dead air well while you do i i will say eventual nits filled in my story here she says that she got it for our very first anniversary so i would have gotten that in 2010 oh, wow. she got it for 90 dollars from a seller with zero sales see the the, the courage on that wow. one 
in 2010, $90 in 2010 was $450 in today's money. That's insane. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, the complete fetch is a little over 130 there. So and that's uh Wow. That's Pierce IDF2, yeah, you wouldn't expect it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it has shot yeah. up, though. Like, if you look at the little trendy chart, I mean, in October of uh, 2019, it was 41 bucks. Oof. So it's, it's went up almost 100 bucks uh, in a little over 18 months. So pretty nuts. Took me by surprise for sure. So that one really fell victim to the to the COVID bump. Yeah. Tripled yeah. in price. Hot dang. It sure did, yeah. yeah. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Here, let me hit you with my number two. Hit it. Kodelka. This one surprised me. Uh, I went and I have, like I said, I have my stuff in game value now. I just sorted by highest price because that was like the easiest way for me to figure it out. I know that prices change so rapidly that um, it might not be fully representative of what the rarest or most expensive ones are, but it was a good starting point for me. Um, I bought this game for like $20, $30. Like I bought it for so cheap back in the day. No one cared about it. It's uh, it's essentially like the first game in the Shadow Heart series, which is a RPG series on the PS2 that I really like. But uh, like everything survival horror, it has jumped. It's like a survival horror RPG type of thing. Very cool game, and uh, yeah, it's suddenly like three hundred dollars plus. Sadly, this Whoa. one is no manual, but oh. it is what it is. We'll track down a manual for it eventually. We get that you get that Kodelka ASMR there, that little yeah. that case crack. Enjoy that. That's nice. That was really nice. You know the thing but, uh, about most PS1 games, if you don't have the manual, you don't have any cover art. At least there you got you have a cover, right? Yeah, in fact, I there's only about ten games, not even, maybe like five to ten games that I don't have the manual for on PS1. And they're they're almost all ones where it was a double disc game. Or a double disc case, and I didn't realize I didn't have the manual at the time. That's a bummer, dude. That's a bummer. I have one coming up in, in our, uh, what we're calling our ugly boy section or whatever, uh, where I whiffed on that as well. Um, but that that's a cool one. I like uh, survival horror. That's not one I've really heard of, man. So you stumped me there. All right. I'm going to show my next I, one. I would say check it out, but it's hard to check out. It, it's a pricey one. Yeah, you said that it was somewhere in the 300s? Something like that. Maybe not without the manual, but yeah, something like that. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so this was this is going to be an eyesore for most folks who are so precious about their, you know, not having the greatest hits in their collection. But I have the greatest hits version of Symphony of the Night. I, had, I got I picked this up from our friend Musty Hobbit for sure. He he had this, uh, you know, I don't know. I think it was around t- um, too many games or something like that. And we were making deals with each other, and so this one is great because. I don't know that I could afford it not on greatest hits. <laughs> I think this is the only <laughs> way I'm, I'm, I'm owning it. So I'm happy with it, and it's in really good condition. And again, it came from a buddy, so that always helps. And uh, you know, what, yeah. what can you say about Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Everybody knows who, you know, about that. But uh, it's fetching, you know, it's a it's a greatest hits game that's fetching over 100 bucks right now, and you, you hate to see it. And that one is just so wild to me because it's, it's a very common game. I mean, one, it's sold enough to become a greatest hits, but right. two... Everyone knows about it. It's very popular. So it's on, when like, something yeah, you can breaks it out of that other curve, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, all over the place. You can get on PSP. Place. You can download it. Yeah. It's like, quit buying it. Leave it for collectors. <laughs> you don't need it. Give it to me. Well, you, you already have one, so you should just be I happy know. that people I'm, can I'm send happy. it to the moon for all you care. I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, you have another one, or were you done? That was yeah, you. so this is my most expensive boy. Okay. Ooh. All right. And that is, it's, it's a game that I'm always singing the praises of, so people probably won't be surprised. Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle. Probably okay. the best platformer on the PlayStation. In fact, I would pretty obviously say that it is. And yeah, this one, if you look at like the, the price needle on this one, um, I bought it a long time ago. I, I spent silly money on it, but not like crazy money. I think I bought this one on eBay for a, around 100 maybe. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But this one, like, slowly was going up, going up, going up. And then at some point, it hit, like, 300. And it just, that needle went vertical. And now, it, it's, like, it's starting to touch on $1,000. Like, it, it's not selling for that yet, but 500 600 700 And, and yeah. they're selling at that price. So if this one is... Buy it now is 4000 no doubt. But, yeah, it definitely, it doubled mm-hmm. in price since March of this year. 
Yeah, it, crazy. And doubling in price, like we're surprised when we see Parasite Eve do that, right? Go from 40 to 120, tripling in price. But for something that's already $300 to rapidly double in price is yeah. even crazier to me. Yeah, you, it's, it's rough out there. Hopefully it settles down a little bit. All right, here's yeah. my number one. And let's, so I got let's this. See it. Yeah, I got this from the same fella. I got the breath of, I almost called him the breath of the fires from Breath of Fire. From <laughs> uh, and that's going to be Clock Tower. Clock Tower. That's Ooh. a pretty fun one there. Yeah. Now none of my prices are touching yours, buddy. You got some. You got some gems there. But uh, this is a pretty good one. You know, uh, it being a uh, horror specifically, not quite survival horror. I guess it's more point like adventure horror. But um, I can't wait to play this. I've never played it. And I'm putting it off until Spooktober. And uh, just look at the cover. Bloody scissors. Yeah. Dude. Those scissors are so... You can't put those in the dishwasher. How are you cleaning the blood off of those scissors? So I can't wait. <sighs> I'm jealous. That's So Clock Tower 1 and 2 are both on still on my PlayStation wish list. So you, oh, man. you're giving me a case of the jellies. You, you better... Uh, well, I was going to say you better prioritize that. But I'm sure everything else you want is also worth bukus of dollars. So. True. I, that's the problem at this point is everything I want is expensive so it slowed everything way down yeah yeah for sure all right buddy well we still have a stack of ps1 games here and they're they're not yeah we do they're not the they're not the gems anymore we've gone through those they're not the mm. the prized possessions necessarily but they're, they're maybe they're fun to talk about what do you have for us today what do you have to share uh, I have a I'm gonna give you a PSA I'm gonna give you a PSA here. And I'm going to use this as my visual aid. Van Ark. First off, excellent game. Hidden gem. Uh, very fun. It's, this is essentially Star Fox on the PlayStation. It's really good. Really good rail shooter. But um, I wanted this game many, many years ago. And it was about a $30, $40 game. And I get stubborn sometimes. I, I'll look up... A, there'll be a game that I, that I decide I'm hunting. I'll look up the price... And my goal is to get it cheaper than that price. I always just want to get a little bit of a deal because yeah, otherwise I would spend my money too fast. No, I'm with you there. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted this one. I was like, I'm going to get it for 30 and suddenly copies started selling for 45 and I was, I was holding strong, you know, I was digging my heels and I was like, I'm going to get it for 30. And then they started going for 50 and right around then I just said, you know what? I'm going to go against my, um, my better judgment and I'm just going to pop on one at 50. Even though that's what it's going for, I'm going to forego getting the deal. Uh, and it worked out well for me because it now you know now it's much more than that. And if I had stubbornly waited, I would have just waited it out and it would have shot right past me and it would have shot right up. So I think the lesson is sometimes if you really want to play a game, as long as you're not overpaying, maybe don't be so stubborn and, and absolutely wait for a deal unless you are truly only trying to pick stuff up that you get like in lots off craigslist or something like that i hear you man i do the, i do a lot of the same stuff i say you know what i'm not going to pay that i'm going to pay this amount and uh years and years and years go by and those games are now 500 700 and i just don't own them so good on you <laughs> for, for stepping it up you know we talked earlier about how important it is to check your <laughs> your double disc cases for manuals because it's hard to see if they're in there or not but you know it's really easy to see them in in the clear case um in yep. the case of this game that i have here it's called you wouldn't know you wouldn't know looking at this this game is called shipwreckers this is actually not the uh, <laughs> cover this is the second page of the manual so when i was looking online Ooh. uh it said uh, yeah the manual's included it said it said that it didn't say missing <laughs> the first page of the manual so here's the manual here uh you can see there there's it's just it's kind of separated and uh it's got uh you know just a map and stuff like that uh disc disc all here we got the disc that's great that's good because <laughs> i can play it that's fantastic yep uh the, but the back back's good but i just don't have the first page of the freaking manual so it's an eyesore to me forever and i didn't return it i could have I only i spent like seven bucks on it you know it was in like a, a bunch of games i bought from a game store this past year but i thought have the manual would I thought there may be an asterisk or something, man, to say we have the man. You can. <sighs> there are instructions for how to play, but it's missing like a very important page that you'll you'll want. That would have been great to know. Yeah, I can get that. You you lost on the technicality there, like oh, you know, technically it has something approximating a manual. The, these game stores that don't show you pictures <laughs> are uh, online. 
really really starting to be low on my prioritization list for buying from there for sure yeah it's i as time has gone on i i suspect more if you're not showing me a picture that there's a reason yeah yeah and it's not just it, that you're too lazy to take it it's because it's missing the first page of the manual yep well here let me show you my sad manual story then too okay And hey, Ethel Chip, thank you. It is a cool bandana. Oh, I should have shouted. Let me shout out the chat real, real quick. Uh, I saw Ethel in there. I've, I've seen them comment before and hang out in some streams. So hello, Ethel Chip. Also saw Scorpionic Dragoon, Dragon MPT. We had a good time streaming the other. Oh, well, I guess it was two months ago. Uh, I remember him being in there. So that's fun. Hungry Bill, of course. And then all the regulars. You got your top spots, your PDs, your your deans. Uh, yeah, good, good folks. So thanks, thanks everyone for hanging out. Haru OK is here, and then I think I've never said that out loud. I hope I got it close. <laughs> but uh, lo love seeing that guy. He used to make funny videos. I don't know if he still does or wish he would. If he isn't. But uh, okay, cool. Oh, MVP, yeah. what's up? Mega Drive profile. That's a, that's a good channel. Check that one out. Mega Drive profile. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. A lot of wonderful people in here. Yeah. So I mean, it's not that extravagant, but. So this is the only single disc game I have with no manual. It's Digimon World. Mm. And I think what happened here is I got burned. I had this game growing up, but I had the greatest hits. And I Which ended up... Well, for some people it is. So yeah. Oh, I, look at this. Th this is the state we're in. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> That's um, I ended up popping on a black label... To, to, to swap it out, not realizing that that one didn't have a manual. I didn't check the listing too much. And by that point, I had already gotten rid of the Greatest Hits one, and so I was stuck with this one with no manual. And forever, I've just been like, ah, I'm not going to buy another copy. I'm just going to wait for a manual to show up. And one never has, so... It's very rare someday to see I'll... a stack of PS1 manuals for sale, you know? It is. I mean, you, you can find a stack of you know, the Game Boys every now and again, mm -hmm. some, some of their manuals. An NES manual stack is not oh, yeah. unheard of. For sure. Maybe even some N64, but for some reason, PS1, I think because they're always in, like... Exactly, yeah, they never get separated from the herd, because it looks dumb yeah. without it. The first yeah, look, person look at how ugly out, immediately put it back. I mean, it, it looks fine like this, yeah, which is how sure. I see I mean, it on the shelf, I, but I, shelf. I know. I know, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, we're, we're showing some ugly ones now. I have my my legend of of Dragoon is look at that corner. Oh goodness gracious! She, I don't know if she took a hit in my house or maybe before I got it. I don't even remember. I've had it forever. But um, Ooh. yeah, we lost some plastic <laughs> there. We did. We also have some separation uh, going on there. But you know everything's good. The disc looks good. We got manuals. I should be happier about it. But every time I walk past, so this is one. You can see that on the shelf. You know that yeah. looks. That looks rough, and that bothers me a little bit, but we're not replacing it. We're keeping this forever. It's mine. <laughs> it, hey, you know what? It is what it is. Every now and again, I mean, that one is a little rough on the shelf, but every now and again, um, I, I kind of like a cracked case like that. Like, it gives it a little bit of gives it a little bit of flavor, a little bit of personality. You know that that copy's been through some stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, when we get into our cartridge stuff a few episodes from now, I got some real fun cartridge looking or fun looking cartridges, you know. Yeah. Do you have any other weird stuff to show off here with the PS1? Got no nothing else that's ugly. Uh, I've got. Uh, wow, well, we've been on PS1 for a while here, haven't we? Dang. You know, it's it's going to be one of our bigger ones. That one in PS2, and then after that, I think it'll be uh, it'll be skinny all the way to the end. But yeah, I've got a couple things I'll show off here. Um, I've got I've got some some hidden gem, and I've got some real interesting, just kind of okay. oddball stuff. Um, this is my, my PSA to everyone. If you haven't played this game, Muppet Monster Adventure. Oh, yeah. I just picked this one up recently. It's not too easy to track down. Um, it's it's not cheap by any means, and uh, it uh, it actually doesn't seem to come up as often as you might expect, like a, just a licensed game to come up. But this is like a really great Halloween-themed platformer. It is like surprisingly fun competent long I, I really enjoyed my time with it i yeah. streamed this one too yeah i was going to say i watched you stream it and i remember saying do i like this game i was sort of, <laughs> I, I offended myself for, by, by liking it for some reason but uh no it's a perfectly fine game no, Take a drive profile it, it's a good one. That cracks on jewel cases are like broken bones that can't be healed and uh couldn't agree with that more to be quite honest <laughs> so 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 true okay and then let me uh 
I won't show all three of them, but uh, we do have the kind of the traditional big oh. boxes on the PlayStation. We've got our Lunar and our and our Lunar Two, so those are pretty good. Nice. Uh, and I do have all the pieces in them, which is nice. And I got the Ark the Lad down there, but we won't pull it out. Why? You know why not? Though we're all here waiting on it. Pull it out there, buddy. All right. All right. All right. Pull it out. There, there we go. Yeah, wow. Real, real nice condition too. Oh, These are God. just beautiful sets. Yeah. I like them a lot. I don't have nice. anything like that. That's that's nice. nice. All right. Would you be interested in tracking any of these down? I know you're kind of, you have a complicated relationship with RPGs. No, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. I, I have a complicated relationship with uh, playing them, but I love, I don't mind owning them. I'll own, <laughs> I'll own the shit out of them, man. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What, so, what, what, what interesting goodies do you got for me? Yeah, I just have a couple things. Uh, one that uh, I picked up only because I thought it was weird. Have you ever done that? You just like, well, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah we, I think we talked about that. Um, this yep. is the amazing virtual sea monkeys on the PS1. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen I know you're. It's hard, to, it's hard to stump you, Steve, when it comes to the PS1. I don't know if you've ever played the amazing virtual sea monkeys. Amazing virtual I haven't. I, I've seen the cover, and it, it always gives me kind of like a Beatles vibe, but <laughs> I've never yeah. played the game. It says it's a premium value product. I don't know how you could dispute that. I don't know how you could dispute it. But uh, yeah, you can't. Yeah, seventy levels of push. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, seventy levels of plush underwater environments. It sounds like you get your money's worth out of the amazing virtual sea monkeys. And here's one I thought was interesting. This is a pretty common game. It goes for about well, I don't know. I don't know what it goes for now. I'm not even going to speculate. But I got it for about eight dollars. And um, it's interesting. This is Death Trap Dungeon. If you can't see it yet, Steve. Sorry. This is a game that is is funny to me because I saw it in a magazine when I was a teenager, middle school, and I really wanted it. And I begged mm. for it. I begged my mom for it. And she was like, no, that game will make you a devil worshiper. I was like, what? <laughs> have you? I, I have Castlevania. That's that's evil. She didn't, she didn't care for it. Which is interesting because my mom wasn't even religious. She was just like, no, that's... No, you'll, you'll be a devil worshiper for sure if you start playing Death Trap Dungeon. And, uh, you know, the back of the box, I mean, it's it does have a scantily clad uh, warrior lady running around. Um, maybe she saw that and was like, nah, but I don't know. So when I, I've still never played it. I wanted it so bad for like a whole year. I just had to get it to have it because it reminded me of my mom just mm. out of nowhere being really conservative when it, when it came to video games. So interesting. Funny story, actually, with Death Trap Dungeon. That's so crazy. Uh I, growing up, uh, in like my later teenage years before I moved out, I had my entire, all my walls plastered with video game ads. 100% floor to ceiling. Uh, I, t I ripped out ads out of Nintendo Powers, out of uh, official PlayStation Magazine, Game Pros, just yeah. hundreds and hundreds of ads as wallpaper around my entire room. Of course. And, and so... I started to like develop relationships with games that I had never played or ever seen just by like virtue of the ad being in a spot on my wall that I see a lot. And there was a death trap dungeon ad that was like squarely right there every time you walked into the room. And so I've never picked it up. I've never played it, but I feel like I have put hundreds of hours into thinking about death trap dungeon. Cause it was right there front and center. And you can remember the exact, you know, eight by 10 square. It took up there. On your wall <laughs> exactly and like right now i couldn't list off like the, the the core common ones throughout the room but there's like such a sense memory where as soon as i see one of those covers or i see one of those ads i'm like oh yes that is the corn nuts ad that was sitting on my wall corn nuts you say interesting you know what i think is funny uh, earlier we showed the uh, the picture of your of your final fantasy standy thing yeah and uh in the picture i thought that thing was huge I thought I was no. like, wow, was that like four and a half feet tall? And now I'm, I'm just now noticing it's on like your, whatever that nightstand thing is behind Mario. And it, it's about those, what is that, like right a there. foot tall maybe? Like a foot and a half, yeah. Yeah, you really full me there, buddy. Well, there is a uh, five foot version of that one. I don't I don't own that one. I prefer the countertop size. but Of course, yeah. Let me, I'm going to flip back here and have a look at it there. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I should have been tipped off by the, uh, the size of the PS1 games that are also in view. But I was like, wow, mm -hmm. nice. That's huge. 
Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. No. All right. One Sorry. last thing here. Do you, do you collect the boxes for your consoles? Uh. Any console that I buy, I keep the box, but I don't have boxes for all of them. I would like to have them, but uh, but I don't. Yeah. Well, I do have one for the PlayStation, which is not like a very highly sought after um, expensive box. But the reason I always liked this one, and this is circa '97, uh, is that they put screens of the games on the box. I always thought that was fun. Mm, yes. it wasn't they didn't do it with over pizzazz? You know, because the cover's pretty lame. Like, they just took an out-of-focus shot of the PlayStation, like, real fast. They're like, get a shot for the box. Snap. Pasted it on there. But then on the back, they took a lot of care. That way, you're on, maybe maybe you didn't get it for Christmas, you know? You're not just mm-hmm. gashing the box open and throwing the cardboard over in the corner. Maybe you're on the ride home. You're excited, and you're like, oh, I want this game, too. I want this one. I want this one. So, I spent a lot of time looking at that stuff. I think it's pretty neat. And it I don't is. Think I, I don't... a single one of these games on this box. Maybe one I don't know if I've ever seen the back of that box. In a long time, I'm not like that reddish color. I'm, I'm surprised to see that. I don't remember the, those boxes being red. Yeah, yeah. Maybe mine's a cheap knockoff. Now that I think about it, I don't know. I don't know. Are you ready for some PS2, or do you need to take a break? Are you tired, old man? No, I got a couple more games I want to show you for PS1. Then oh. we'll move on. It's all you. All right. All right. We got a nice stack of of rapid fires here, and we'll end on an interesting story. Oh, good. First off, do you know what your first PlayStation game was? Do you remember oh, good the question. very first PS1 game? Yeah, we we got uh, there was a, a local ad uh, thing. It was like Craigslist before Craigslist. It was called Trade Times, and they were selling yeah. a PS1. Went to pick it up, so it came with a handful of games, a big stack. But I of that stack, I remember uh, Tomb Raider 2 for some reason, or I remember that one. But also for some reason, remember this off-road game. It was just like test drive Ooh. off-road. And uh, I played that a lot because it was the only game I had that wasn't hard as shit like Tomb Raider for about two or three months. So, but yeah, interesting. And sorry, when was that? What uh, around what year? Oh, it have been like uh, I guess ninety eight, ninety nine. Okay, so it was in the in the heyday of the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Also, I think that the chat turned on me. I am sorry that I destroyed the magazines. The <laughs> the Steve you see before you would not do that. But oh, uh, yeah, for sure. But. When you're 17, your judgment and your appreciation of them as, as artifacts is a little lower. Okay? Okay. But this is, this is my first one. Resident Evil 2. Oh, this is the first PS1 game I ever had. I remember, uh, again, I'm real bad with remembering years. People always are like, oh, yeah, it was June 14th of uh, 1986. I don't remember years of when this happened, but it was one of my birthdays in the early life cycle of the PlayStation. It was probably the year that uh, Resident Evil 2 came out, or the year after, so you know, maybe 98, 99, something like that. Yeah. And it was for my birthday. My dad, who is not a game guy, he brought me to Best Buy, and I have, for some reason, I still remember like the layout of that game section and pointing to the PlayStation on the like glass shelves below the game displays and deciding that Resident Evil 2 would be my first game, even though I think he didn't know that it was... As violent as it is, I don't think he would have cared, but I don't think he knew. Um, Because I would have been like 10 or so at the time. Right. Um, But you can tell, see, this one's a little, this one's a little rough. So that my friend didn't treat her so well, but I I don't want to swap this boy out because it's my, I'll keep a beat up copy if it's my original copy of something that means something to me. So it's, it's ugly, but it's going to be mine forever. Oh, you know, you got to love it. You have to love it. All right, let's let's do some rapid fire, just interesting oddities, shall we? Throw them at me, buddy. We got we got a selection of imports. This is my this is my uh, my push to get everyone to start looking at PlayStation imports. This is another one that was a gift from the lovely Eventual Knits. It's Rakugaki Showtime. Whoa, what? kind of like Rakugaki. a cool. It's like uh, let's see if I can get the screenshots to show for you, but it's mm. kind of like imagine a Smash Bros. That's about throwing objects at oh. people. Um, and it all has this like crayon cartoony art style really fun game uh, very cool and again only came out in not not here <laughs> okay we've we've got Pepsi Man classic Pepsi Man I feel like most people are familiar with Pepsi Man have you seen this game before? honestly only because of AVGN <laughs> I've never seen oh Pretty here good. I think I can get everyone in your channel to uh, 
could probably leave right now. I've never seen an episode of AVGN. Oh, you can't say that out loud. No, it's, it's one of the better ones. I would say check it out. Pretty good. But yeah, very fun game. Very cool. And then I just, gosh, I love the art on this one. Mad Panic Coaster. I, is this yes, one you're that familiar one caught with? my eye. Yeah. So this one is... It, it, what a weird game you it's it's literally a roller coaster and it's like an arcade almost like uh just kind of like action dodging type games where you're these kids on these like horror halloween themed roller coasters that are going super fast and you're just trying to like avoid stuff and stay alive like kind of like a donkey kong minecart level expanded into a whole game it's really cool that is cool I, I, again so, I, I would have been just sucked in completely from the cover that's a good cover, cover cover it's amazing right um and there's just so much interesting stuff to collect on ps1 like that and then of course probably saw this in the uh the video but we've got the klonoa beach volleyball this is the only pal game that i own and i just own it because i want to have a full klonoa collection which i think i'm only one game away from i'm just missing a japanese only game boy advance rpg i think jeez yeah so that's a good one and then these last ones. These last ones are interesting. Um, yeah, I get another one, right? Uh, yeah, I got two of these. So these are light span discs. Are you familiar? No, not at they're, all. They're they're educational games for PlayStation that were sent to schools as like you know you'd play Oregon Trail in class, you'd play Zumbinis and other educational games in the computer lab. It was that same concept, but these were games for the original PlayStation. So I have a couple of these Lightspan discs that I got from a game store that was going out of business near me. And what's really cool is if you look right there in pen, it says SPPS. That is St. Paul Public Schools, Ah. which is the school district that I grew up in and went to. So I literally have the educational Lightspan discs from my childhood school district that has to be those have to be pretty rare right uh you know you can get big lots of these on ebay for not too expensive they're not common to find um like Hmm. out and about but they're they're affordable if you want them as just like a an interesting oddity yeah but it's it's a lot harder to get the ones from your own childhood school district yeah yeah very nice uh uh, dean round two under uh, round two gaming was asking if uh, those had cases uh, I, I think that some of them do have CD jewel cases that they came in, uh, but the ones I got were just in these slip cases. This one has a, this, the game I have here is Secret of Google. This is like a really basic point and click adventure game, and it has like this little leaflet That's not here how in the back. Spell Google. <laughs> Actually, I think this is how you spell Google, right? And then the Actually, company right, changed yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I think if you Googled Google, though, Google would be like, do you mean Google? <laughs> you Googling Google right now? Google. Yeah, I think it'd be a difficult thing to Google. So true. Right. So yeah, that, that, those are pretty awesome. I, li- I like having those. So You have yourself some some uh, neat stuff there in that PS1 collection, man. And, and to the crowd yeah. here, that's, uh, or the audience that's watching, they're like, man, they spent an hour on the PS1. I think that's going to be our meatiest one. I think it's going to be, it's going to get slimmer and slimmer as we go. But uh, yeah, PS1's been around the longest. What do you expect? Uh, quick shout out here to uh, Captain Dragman just dropped in. Hello, Captain. And Hello. Um, Briz, if he's still watching, he wanted to see the scantily clad lady on the back of Death Trap Dungeon and uh, Man of the People. So let me flip it over here. And, you know, it was. There you go, Brian. I hope you're happy. You could also have Googled that and um, G O O G L E D. Deed. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to jump right into the PS2 then, shall we? Uh, I think that we shall. And you know what? Huh? Did you bring a nice stack of your of your juiciest boys? I did. Yeah, let's let's do those overviews real quick. Um, let's see here. I'm going to here. Let me just run it over here a little bit. All right, there's your full gamut. Now you have these on what looks like to be more robust shelves. They're not bending at the will of a jewel case. You got your DVD cases there. Nice wooden. Did you build that yourself? I did. You can tell by the way that it's poorly made and it's yeah. not sanded or painted. And all the wood's cracked and all that. Yeah, I can tell. No, it's nice yeah. and rustic. It's very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, they look good on the shelf. I always like the way the PS2 stuff looks. A lot of different colors there. So that's a lot. That's a quite a few games. What do you think of yeah, the number there? What's your number? 
It is. It's about two hundred and eighty-five. Whoa, that's a lot. Give or take a couple. So, uh, PS2 probably uh, probably one of my favorite systems to collect for. I'd say PS2 and DS are my two two favorites. Um, just because the the libraries are so vast, so interesting, and no matter what genre you're looking at, there's always something interesting to check out. Yeah, and now you ha- I'm showing off here your cardboard stand-ups of, of Eco and Jack 2. Yes, those yes. those near and dear to you. Oh, Eco in particular. I, di- I didn't pull it out, but uh, every- everyone should know by now, if they know me, that, that I love Eco. And if you don't know me, I love Eco. Don't pull it out, that's a felony. And then you got some uh, some imports <laughs> here on the PS2 as well. Yes, not as many as on the PS1, but I haven't dug as deep into the library. Um I'll have at least a couple of these. I think one of these pulled out to show you an interesting story for that one on the far end. But just like with the PS1, there's a whole world of cool games on PS2 import if you if you go looking. Yeah. So when did, did is the PS2 since day one, since you since you got the system, you've been hoarding. This is a been a collection in the making for many years. Yeah, and this one more than any other console. Th- this is like really the one where I kind of like trained my modern collector chops on it uh i would this was the first generation where i would go to game stops or i'd go to uh game stores at the time and just pick up whatever looked interesting to me ps2 also came out right in the transition between me being like a young teenager and finally getting a job and having my own money so a lot of these this is the first system where i bought games for myself and um also me and my family, we would take road trips every year. My dad's an over-the-road trucker, and he loves driving. So we would drive, literally, we're in Minnesota. We would drive to the East Coast, down to Florida, over to Texas, and back up over the course of, like, two weeks. And it, all along these road trips, my parents would let me go to, like, game stops in other parts of the country just because I thought I could find unique stuff that I couldn't find anywhere else. Uh, and so I, I picked up a lot of these, actually when I couldn't even play them right away just while we were on these long road trips. And so a lot of these random games that I found are also like tied sense memory style to, uh, uh, to, to being with my family. That's really fun. What a cool memory, man. So yeah, yeah have, it's, it's I'm, really I'm going through it. These are all looking in good shape. I don't see a single yellow GameStop sticker hogging the, the spine of either of any of these. And I can't say with any confidence that my video coming up next is not going to have a few of those. Call that out. Uh, um, let me see here. What have I got next on mine here? Uh, so yeah, I, I took a picture of my, or I took a video of my whole collection, but I'm showing off here first. I do have uh, a couple demo discs for the PS2. And again, I'm, this is a recent thing for me. It's it's kind of like when other PS2 stuff got too expensive. I was like, well, let me just get demo discs because those are fun, and then I can sample and see what games I really want. So uh, I got the Summer Sampler there, which maybe sounds like a platter you'd get at Arby's and a have the Holiday 2004 demo disc and uh, a couple mm-hmm. other, you know, DDR. I've never DDR'd in my life, but I have. Oh. The, I do have the demo disc and Doctor Muta, which is which is weird that he has his own demo disc because he's also on every other demo disc. <laughs> so. You should DDR more. I I think I have every DDR game on the PS2, and I played tons of DDR with uh, eventual nits here on PS2. That was what we were all about in the late aughts, early 2010s. I hear you, buddy. Yeah, I you know I would. I, I mean, I absolutely love music games. I just I've never Ooh. never had never had the opportunity to be quite honest. So we're going through the video here. Uh, you know, I have a I have a nice little uh, what do you call that thing? A, a bookend of an army man holding up uh, one side there, and uh, not not nearly as many as you, but some of these I gotta say not in the best shape when it comes to I me. Mean, these are a lot of these are just old used GameStop, just riddled with sticker residue. Uh, games in the you know I don't mind the sports games you'll see that littered in here too and a lot of folks will probably squeal like hey get this out but no I'm a, I'm I like sports games all right um, but yeah you know I didn't really get hard and heavy hot and heavy into collecting the PS2 right out of the gate probably a thing that I've gotten more and more into over the last three or four years but I do enjoy that system it has quickly risen to being maybe one of my favorite all-time systems just because of the you know the um, the quality of 3D around that time was really starting to get good. 
Um, yeah. Things like Dark Cloud are on there, which are near and dear to my heart, both of them. Um, a lot of good stuff, man. A lot of really good stuff. So you got and, a, a, a number of solid collections in here. I'm seeing those Dark Clouds. I saw the Hitmans. Mm-hmm. You've got uh, the Summoner. Yeah, I'm I'm liking this. Ooh, you've got one that I'm real jealous of, but I'm not going to mention it because I don't know if it's going to show up here. But uh, oh, it probably will if you already see it there. Yeah. All right, I'm well, having a little bit of envy. I'm good. I'm glad to finally get that out of you, man. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, where do you want to start here? You got a you got a top five you want to run through? Yeah, I'll start with my first one. But before that, I will, uh, you know, Mister Mister Briz in the chat here saying both of us have friends. What the hell? I'm assuming Trav has it because he he doesn't got standards. He'll add whatever to his collection. Again, I, that was uh, kind of like the uh, the sea monkeys one. I thought that was weird. I was like, I got what the friends game? <laughs> I think it's just what? trivia. I've never seen a second of the show, but. Yeah. It is. It's called the one with all the trivia. I have it because Eventual Knits is a massive fan of Friends, and oh, when cool. we started dating, she got me into Friends, and I like that show. And so that's uh, even though that seems like it would be filler in most people's collections, that's a perfect example of it's a game that I don't really need to play, but it's meaningful to me to have in the collection for some reason. Well, you know, you know, I think it's neat to have in the collection for the very reason that we're talking about it right now. Somebody will see that and they'll say, "What? What in tarnation is this?" And uh, now we have a conversation. I like conversation pieces in the collection, and Friends happens to be to be that type of game. It gets people talking. Yeah. All right. So, he's, so. He's, that's him smelling my plastic. So tell you what, why don't I first I'll say hi to Mighty Q Dog. How you doing, friend? And then oh, two. Q Dog in the well, house. Why Hello, don't buddy. I pull up my pull up my number five for you? Very cool. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Brian, uh, Citizen Gamer here. He says, "Was that my X Files?" And uh, yeah, Brian, it is. It is your X Files game. Uh, <laughs> I'm counting it today. Today it's it's my X Files, but, <laughs> but it is yours. Absolutely, you can have it back if you want, or maybe you can give it to me. We should. But just anyways, uh, so number five here, Mister Dot Hat Quarantine. Uh, this has long been one of the collection kind of show pieces for people that they want to track down. I actually played this series. Um, as it was coming out, I really liked the idea of one game being spread across four games. And I like the style to it. I like the gameplay. I like the fake MMO bit. So I, when this game first came out, I really wanted to, to find it not new, but I wanted to find a, a pre-owned copy as soon as I could. And man, this game just was nowhere. It, it wasn't showing up in any of the game stops around me. It took me forever to find, but thankfully, I think for like $30 pre-owned, I was finally able to track down a copy and complete. I don't have all of them with me, but uh, they make a nice bit of art on the spine when you when you have all four. And pretty fun game. This is this game, like half of this game is one big boss fight, but uh, very cool. Yeah, man. Hello, yes, Guns that heck represent. They, they just dropped into the chat. How's it going? Uh, I, I did want to, yeah, I, I had to shout out Dean, Round 2 Gaming, because I think he ran through all, how many are in that PS2 series? Four? Four, yeah, and he yeah. ran through all of them like an absolute trooper. In like a weekend. Yeah, he's pretty yeah. badass. But yeah, so for me, um, this is going to start a series of, of things. So you're not going to after I show you this one, you're not going to be surprised at the other two. But um, actually, I'll go in a different order here. I'll start with this one. Fatal Frame. You have the series too. I'm pretty sure I, I glimpsed it there in your um, in your video yep. there. Love uh, it. But yeah, I I've only played this one so far. And uh, Brian and uh, Citizen Gamer in the chat and I played this together. We didn't finish it because it got hard. There's a part there where I uh, just got it got we, we were low on film and the ghosts were high on scariness. We got a little frustrated, put her down. I think maybe we could give it another try and see because I think we're right near the end. I think we're about an hour out of uh, or less of being done. We just need to we just need to do it, pull it off. But it, it has been a while. I don't know if we can do it. But this one, unfortunately, I don't have the manual, so we're we're a little handicapped there. But it's all right. Mm, Still that's one. A, that's, that's a beautiful one, though. Yeah, absolutely. Still one. That, you know, in my collection, what you saw there was is littered with a lot of common stuff and sports games. Um, all of my fatal frames are more of the uh, the ones I'm you know proud to have. They're the some of the more gems of the collection, you might say so. They're good. I particularly like the box art for two, and two is my favorite of the Fatal Frames, so check it out. I will. All right, so let me give you my next one here. My next one, uh, this is probably, no, I, that that would be a lie. I was going to say the one out of these I spent the most on, but it's pretty comparable. 
Um, this is one uh, case where I wanted it and I let it get away from me. So this blood will tell. I was interested in this game for a long time and I was I was sleeping on prices I was sleeping on copies trying to get a deal trying to get a deal and then I don't want to point fingers you know I don't want to I don't want to be upset but uh, we'll just say that this game was then featured in a video identifying it as maybe you know unexpectedly good as okay. a as a, uh, Maybe a, a hard to find a, ruby a gemstone people might seek you might say <laughs> um and so i was immediately punished for not picking it up and i it shot way up and then i just had to kind of bite the bullet and as with everything because covid has doubled the price of everybody's collections like now i got it for a good price but um i i should have just bought it when it was in the teens and 20s and not when it was much more than that but pretty cool like action samurai game i actually still haven't played through it i just played a little bit of it to get a sense for it um because i want to sit down and probably stream this one at some point yeah i'd be interested to see what it's all about i haven't heard a thing about it so you're saying it's a uh a, a sought after uh shiny object <laughs> yeah. indeed yes might want to see we don't, we don't want to get MJR as the lawyers on us, but that seems like a good idea. Um, again, I told you, I warned you. So my next one's Fatal Frame 2 here. Flip over to me. Fatal Frame 2, <laughs> uh, Crimson Butterfly. This is one that I hear is, is the better one and the people the one that people enjoy the most. Uh, so once, uh, yes. again, I, I play I play scary games with my buddy Brian because I get real scared. and He's real strong. He's very <laughs> strong now. He's been working out. So uh, he can keep me safe. Uh, again, no manual. So, again... Uh, not not the full thing here, but you know who's reading the manual. You're playing this in the dark. You, can, you can't read the manual. You're looking up walkthroughs on your phone, you know, because you're you're too afraid to touch the box. Scary game. Scary game. <laughs> Real good one though. Real good one. Actually, you know what? Scary is going to be a little bit of a theme. Oh, good. I love it. I love it. Next one up for me. Haunting ground. Ooh, it's got a doll. So. On Horror on PS2 ain't cheap. This one, for a long time, this one kind of lagged behind the other ones. Uh, like the other real heavy hitters in the system. And I was able to snag it. I, I grabbed this copy on eBay for I think like $60 at some point. And um, yeah, very very interesting game. I, I love horror in the PS2 like style. Like scary but graphically not gonna like blow your mind or anything so mm -hmm. um as as is true with a lot of these i save my horror games to play them until october so i don't get through them as quickly as i probably should I'm with but you. um but yeah very cool game yeah i've seen that cover a number of times but i've never really known anything about the game did you say you you have not played that yet like that's going to be on a future stream maybe this will definitely show up in, on a future oh, uh, stream, yeah. And yeah, you play you play as this uh, the girl, but the dog is a character that like it, it's almost like they're working together, like a two player game. Right, right, right. And that that stream is somewhere right there. You can see it. It's, uh, it says uh, <laughs> Twitch.tv forward slash Blinkum. And you want to check that out? You want to check that out in October if you like that game. You just showed there. Uh. <laughs> Again, and we got another fatal frame here. But you know what? We got we got the manual. <laughs> we did it. We got a manual. We got a manual here. You so love to see exciting. it. Oh, what? Oh, you don't see it yet. Oh, I'll, I'll, yeah. Well, it's in there. I promise. We even have an insert back there too. We went. <laughs> we got the whole thing. And uh, you know they don't lie on the back of the box. It's a bone chiller, they say. So, again, if I ever get my druthers finish one, make it through two, we're looking at three. And then all I'm missing at that point, I believe, is a Wii U version that's an import. Do you know anything about that? Do you have that one? I do have that one. It's it's very good. Um, yeah, it's fun. They're they're all. I love all the Fatal Frame games. I think they're all a good time. Yeah, I agree with you. Did you did you pick up all these at the same time, or no. have they just slowly been acquired? Yeah, from various eBay purchases or convention purchases here and there. Yeah, and really the reason that uh, I, I normally will try to go for a manual most of the time, you know. But these were ones, uh, one and two, Brian and I were like really wanting to play them soon. So I just settled on just getting the game at the time, thinking I'd get the manuals later. So we made it through most of one. I was like, well, we're about to beat one. Let me go ahead and get two real quick. 
and then we didn't finish one because we got scared. And then later, uh, or rather stuck, I'll say that. And then later, uh, I just saw three at a convention and said, might as well get the whole set. Nice. Might as well. Right? Good stuff. Right. Man, you think that this is a survival horror show? Shout out to J9. Popped in the chat there. Hey, buddy. Thanks for hanging out. I'd have to agree, J9. You do rock, dude. Oh, me? Oh, J9 rocks, for sure. All right. Uh, my my second biggest boy here. More survival horror. We got Kuan. Uh, this one is another one that uh, I just wanted it for a long time. I actually I knew about this game, but I for some reason I overlooked it. I I couldn't tell you exactly why, but I know that my tastes have changed a little bit um, as time has gone on. Like I would say in the last ten years or so, I've opened myself up to enjoying more types of games than I previously would have. I was a little bit more like rigid in my opinion on stuff before then and so i actually saw this one back in the day and, and considered it but i was like now nah, why would i play kuon when i could play you know fatal frame or silent hill um and so i, I passed it and then later in life when my taste had changed then i had to go track down a copy for uh a lot more than that but thankfully i've had this one for many many years um, I kind of had, I read the tea leaves on this one a little bit and it was on my wish list and I saw it starting to creep up and I was like, oh, I've seen this happen before. I'm not going to let it happen. So I, I popped on one before it could get unrealistic. What? Yeah. Unrealistic. I have, that's your number three. That's my number two. That's okay. Good. Well, I don't know why I said good, but like, <laughs> holy crap, that game is going for a lot. Jeez, yeah. I, I don't spilled my... my drink. I dropped my game in the floor. I'm sweating. Do you know what it's going my, for right now, like this moment? Uh, I mean, I couldn't tell you exactly, but it's something like 600 And it goes up around October every year. Yeah. So it'll probably go up to 750 uh, in October, 800 in October, and it'll go back down to five, 600 Yeah, I mean, again, not not that uh, price charting is the always true gospel for every second of sales, but uh, hitting around 730 right now, buddy. So. Wow, not yeah, now. that's that's even more than I thought. And yeah. round two, yes, it is, uh, it is age tech. Very nice. That is, man, that's your number two. Yeah, I mean, my, my number one's very similar. So anyone that's familiar with the PS2 library probably could guess my number one, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil it. You'll have to wait one minute to find out. Wait one minute, folks. Jeez Louise. Well, mine, this is my number. I have no reason I'm at number three. You know, I'm going to do two together. It's do pretty it. close. And one is one of those dastardly greatest hits. No one wants in their collection but me. Because, I mean, it's the greatest hits. You know, why wouldn't I want them to brag a little bit? Your greatest hits, show yourself. So we got the champions nah. games. Were one of these the ones that you were you were uh, pining over there, the champions? Or were you looking at something else? I was looking at something else. I was looking at uh, the that X Files. Oh, right. Well, I didn't realize that. Is that one? Is that one a, a go, fetching a high high uh, numeric amount these days? Yes, sir. Let me let me pull it up here briefly just to see. Some kind of rough price on it, but resist, uh, resist, reserve. Yeah, Dude. I slept on this one. There was a copy locally mm -hmm. a couple years ago for thirty bucks or so. Didn't yeah. buy it. Now, hmm. now that puppy is a little, little bit more than that. It's a little, little more like fifty or so. Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm actually seeing a hundred. So, uh, <laughs> oh, Brian will probably want that back to sell it. Um, maybe, maybe I'll go fetch it real quick when we switch cams. But. Anyway, these two games, uh, I think they're fetching around the same amount. Really fun games. They remind me a lot of the Baldur's Gate series. And uh, the reason that they do is that my wife and I, she doesn't play a ton of games with me. We don't play a lot of games together. She doesn't have the same interests that I do. But we did have a lot of fun playing Baldur's Gate. And we were looking for more games like that. Someone recommended this series. And so we, we picked these up. And uh, these are surprisingly for my shady and shoddy ps2 collection both of them are complete which is great and in beautiful uh, good shape so pretty happy about that so uh these are these are really good really solid games um i don't think they get talked about enough personally but they're pretty good the uh the first dark alliance is one that i put i couldn't even tell you how many hours into i never really played champions or dark alliance 2 as much but that first dark alliance on ps2 floored me when it came out and i played it co-op with tons of people i probably put 100 hours into that game Right on, man. Very cool. All right, what's your numero uno? Numero uno, the other big survival horror boy. We got us some ruler rows. Whoa! It, it, now, is that the white whale on the system? 
uh yeah it? this and kuan fight each other but uh generally these are kind of the big daddies of the ps2 mm. so i have a little bit of a, reg a regret story on this one i was so close to getting this for such a much better price um uh probably this this was a very late ps2 game if i recall correctly uh let me look here 2006 so yeah i mean mm. that the wii was coming out in 2005 2006 um but i was at uh, a couple years after that 2007 or so uh i was at a girlfriend's house at the time and her brother was playing it and i i was watching and i was like wow that game seems kind of cool I might go pick myself up a copy of that. And I, I literally was like starting the process of like, yeah, I'm gonna go get myself a copy. Let's head on down to GameStop. And I don't know why I listened to this guy, but he was like, you know, terrible game. You don't want it. Oh, you don't want to buy it. Sabotage. And so I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, it's not good. And I was like, ah, okay. So I gave up on that dream. Probably could have got it for 20 bucks at the time, you know, when no one cared about it. And then had to seek it out later for, um, I, I can't remember what I paid for it on. Uh, I think I sold some stuff to to make a little fun money and ended up buying it on eBay for 150 or something like that, 200. Hey, you did good, really. If you think about it, you know. People yeah, in the long in the long run, it worked out, but it's just painful that I could have had it for so much more. Oh, and I see round two feels my pain. He also keeps passing it up and it keeps going. I just passed it up the one time and I and I lost a bunch of money. So I know where you're coming from. That hurts. That hurts. We've all well, we've all been there as collectors, right? We've all been there. It's not the not the only story you have like that, I'm sure. But just because that one happens yeah. to be a uh, high fetcher these days, well, at least you have it. At least you have it. Here's my. Yeah. And I don't think it was my um, my I don't know rarest, priciest game <laughs> uh, before November, October of this past year. But today it is. It's a Silent Hill Origins. And just you know, price keeps going up on those things. I'm, I think you have you have this one, right? I think I saw it when we went by, went through the. Yeah, I'm a big suite. Silent Hill fan. Right, um, right. Yeah. But yeah, that, that one went crazy. Hey, <laughs> All the Silent know? Hills did. I wanted to show off something like you know interesting. Not not that this isn't, but you know you got you got the nice and interesting stuff. And I was like, really, Silent Hill is the the one for me? Okay, cool. So pretty cool, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Uh, there you go. Silent Hills are just like uh, what we were saying about Symphony of the Night, right? Where they're these common, common-ish, popular series that just have so much demand that they just exploded. Man, they sure did. All right, you want to run through some weird and good? Good and weird? Yeah, let me tell you what. I I'll let you choose. We'll do a little choose-your-own-adventure. Oh, I, lo I love that. I've got a couple... I've got a small stack of interesting pickup stories, and I've got a... Uh, small stack of stuff just kind of random stuff that i'm happy i own for various reasons um and then i've got a couple oddballs we'll, we'll probably close on the oddball so do you want to just see some random happy boys some ones that mean something to me or that i liked or do you want yeah. to see some good pickup stories which one are you favoring right now uh, hit me with that first one i think it'd be i think that'll be a good step up that uh the, the ones that i'm just happy i have yeah yeah what, what what what's ones there that just tickle you just right what are you happy to have there all right, so I'm going to ask you this on every console we go through because I think it's really interesting to know. Yeah. But uh, what was the first game you had on PS2? Because for me, it was Final Fantasy X. I got this with my system on uh, Christmas. And I remember, I will never forget this. Uh, I went down, hooked up the PS2, put this game in. It was like a stormy, snowy night. I hooked it up to my tube TV there in my bedroom. And my dad was standing next to me as I booted up the like opening cutscene on this, you know, uh, the like early scene with Xanderkin, then it gets attacked by Sin and stuff like that. And I remember my dad, he, he again, not a video game guy, not a technology guy, his jaw dropped and he turns to me and he says, how will they ever make any game that looks better than this game? Like right? he, he could not believe he was like, we've hit this is the most realistic that graphics will ever be. I, I, uh, I'm with your dad, I had that thought too. Those cutscenes in that game are they hold up still? They're still pretty good looking. They are, and I love Final Fantasy X. I know a lot of people call this the beginning of the end for Final Fantasy, um, but I think this is one of the best Final Fantasies out there. I, I really, really love this game. Yeah, now that was one of the earlier ones that I had for sure. But the first game I had, it's not. You're not going to be excited to hear this. It was Madden 2001. 
Those I'm excited to hear that. You know what? I don't. I'm not here to disparage sports. You're a sports guy. You love sports. That probably was very exciting for you to have. It was, man. I do. I remember going because I was a day one. It's the only time I've been day one uh, console owner. Um, my parents. I, I was. I was on the ball. I really wanted it. My parents got it for me there, and uh, so I was the only kid. First time ever. The only kid that because I had like a. I had like a regular Nintendo up until like 1999. Like I was, I was always way behind. So this was, I was on the cusp, the cutting edge, finally. And all the kids at school were like, "Whoa, you, what game you got? What games you got?" And uh, I, I had something other than Madden. I don't remember what it was. I didn't play it a whole bunch. But when, when I was talking to them about Madden, I was like, "You can see the holes in their jerseys. <laughs> you can see grass had- stain on their bridges." I was so excited. <laughs> I. I, I was never a sports guy going up, and I remember actually having a similar experience on the uh, original Xbox. I think it was NFL 2K2 being like, wow, I can't believe what technology is capable of. Insane. Absolutely All insane. Right. Let me share two more happy to owns slash uh, PSAs, and then, uh, and then I'll toss it over to you. Okay. So first up here, we got uh, just kind of representative of the imports. Again, same same uh, pitch as PS1. PS2 has all kinds of crazy good imports. So look up your imports, people. This is Espagaluda. This is a really good shoot 'em up that's on the, the PS2. I think there's a sequel to this on the 360 that's a little more popular. But yeah, just I just love tracking down uh, cool imports. And what I love about buying games from Japan is, gosh, they take such good care of their stuff. I mean, this thing you would believe i just mm. took the shrink wrap off like right before this it's just absolute like not a bend in the manual nothing just mint as mint can be love it beautiful and then the last one uh a game that is is spendy but it's not why i brought it i brought it to to just kind of like represent why i love the ps2 so much and why i'm happy to collect for it that's tulip this is a really weird game where you like you do quests and you build relationships with people to like kiss them and like build kissing power you can even say on the back it says improve your reputation by helping critters and earning extra smooches but there's so much stuff like this or you know like mr mosquito just so much random stuff on ps2 and it just makes it endlessly fun to dig uh like deep into the library and find cool games yeah, interesting. A lot of smooches. Interesting. Huh. Gotta be smooching. That reminds me of a game I have I'm not bringing to the table here today, but Stretch Panic. I don't know why it reminds me of that, but... Very, very similar, like, Is feel, it? right? I was going to say kind just of, kind of, kind of like weird, weird zany. Yeah. 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 Uh, that one was too weird for me to even bring up here today. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple shout-outs real quick. I see uh, Jesus Flores in the chat. Hello, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. And and Bill Chicago, a regular there on the old drunk friend email chain. So, hello, Bill Chicago. Okay. Hello, everyone. Yeah, well, and also everyone else that's here, the other folks. Hello <laughs> to you as well. Just just noticing people as they pop in, trying to stay engaged. Okay, I just have I have some ugly stuff that I've picked up recently. Hit me my, with the uglies. I, I, mine, my, my PlayStation isn't my ugliest console, so I, I need yeah. you to give give me my ugly fix. Well, this one took me by surprise because, again, I ordered this from... I think it might have been the same game store that got me with ship records. I don't, <laughs> I don't trust this place. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't trust them anymore. Yeah. Um, so this this box is the worst box I have ever... I don't even know. I don't think it's a legit box, actually. I think it, it's like a second-hand thing. Well, we got a crack. I don't know if you can see this, but we got some separation down here with the plastic. I'm Actually, the game... This is the longest the game has ever stayed in, in this thing. Normally, when I open it, it's already just out running around. Um, it it wow. does this in the back. Like, I'm not. What's, what's going on with that? It doesn't shut. It doesn't latch. It's just all day with that. Uh, oh, look, the disc actually did fall out that time. But you know what's crazy? All this mess, disc, flawless. Unbelievably good disc. I don't think it grew up in this case, I'll be honest with you. I think it was. Actually, you know what? Look at the center of the disc. It's been. It has been in there forever because the center. I don't know if you can see that, but the center is chewed out of the middle. Oh man, <laughs> we got it's rough. It is rough, but um, I might upgrade that because I think it's the original. Uh, what is it? Cover? It's just yeah. the case is just wonky, dude. It's not great, so that's an wow. ugly one for sure. <laughs> that is an ugly boy, but I like seeing. It. Have you? 
played that game round two here in the chat saying that it's he's pretty impressed with it have you checked that one out i don't know anything about it no the, and the reason i bought it was because i'd heard that it was decent um and it was only going for like i should have known when they were selling it for four bucks that it wasn't in great shape i was like oh, that was a decent game i'll pick it up um yeah so the de decent game not a decent case the other one here mm -hmm. i don't even i think this is what happened with this one i'm so mad at I'm at a flea market or something, and there's a. I, I'm desperate one day at the flea market. I've gone through booth, 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 booth. It's getting hot. It's almost noon. I'm getting hungry. I've been there for three or four hours. I haven't seen any good deals, any good games. Finally, I get to this guy. He doesn't really have any games. He's got like power tools and like old Richard Petty baseball cards. Even though that guy drove cars, he still <laughs> had his own baseball card series. Stuff like that. But then the bottom of this box, he's got like one PlayStation game. He's got like 25 cents on it. And I'm like, I need to take something home today. I need to validate this trip. We come home with Big Mother Truckers. Now, it's not like I'm, <laughs> I'm ever going to slap into my PlayStation. Uh, mm. But, again, we got... I think he was chewing on this before I got to it because the top <laughs> of it's completely cut. Um, and it doesn't look like a very wholesome game, mind you. I mean, no no manual, unfortunately. Let's let's have a look here. I haven't, I've really never peeked at the... Yeah, this looks like it's been ran over a belt sander. So, not, not, my, uh, not my proudest piece, for sure, but... You know, I mean, it's like that's, the friends that's game. pretty it's fitting. It's a conversation starter. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It just this makes sense for being the trucker. For sure. And then lastly, one that um, ticked me off in hindsight. I was, I went to buy, you got to be careful out there, people. I went to buy a Dragon Quest Eight on the PS2 many moons ago. And it wasn't until, because I got real excited, it wasn't until I got home and realized that the art on the inside was reprinted. I had been duped. Oh. Dude, this is on. This is just on paper, and this is garbage. But I had been, I, I went too fast on it, moved too quickly, made a mistake. I've learned since then. This was many moons ago. But um, be careful. I've not replaced it's, it, that. Easy mistake to make. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, hmm. did you have any other? You had some other stuff you want to share, right? Uh, yeah, I've got a solid stack. I've got one ugly boy though. So oh, sure, let me sure let me show you my ugly boy. Yeah. So, and I feel so bad about this one. So I, I take good care of my stuff. Again, I'm kind of a little bit of like a presentation freak. I don't like to keep too much grody around in the collection. Yeah, I, don't I bought this game day one. So this is entirely my fault. Like I, no one to blame but me. I bought it, put it on the shelf. I don't know how this happened, uh, but this is the Final Fantasy XII Collector's Edition. And if we catch the light, that might not be obvious to you, but all these spots are not supposed to be there. Like this is all, oh. this is all like rust stains or something. I think mine kind of looks like that too, though. And I don't know if it's just like this material is starting to to go out after this much time, or or what's going on. Because I, uh, you know, I've always had it in you know well like air conditioned environments, non-humid environments. It was never in a box in the garage or anything. It was just literally always on a shelf in my game room or bedroom. So hmm. it's just like deteriorated over time. And it's, and it's a shame because this was the original copy and I did everything I could to keep it nice, but it's like nature is fighting me on it. You know, let, let me go keep talking. I'm going to go check mine sure. out. I, I don't care as much about that game as you probably do. Maybe we could do a trade, get you a better copy. Be, let me be right back. Sure. Oh my, we're doing a, doing a live trade here. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Here, while, while he's gone, I'll show y'all. Here's Mr. Mosquito. Pretty good game. Sadly, this is one of them that uh, I bought pre-owned in GameStop back in the day. doesn't have its manual, but fun game. Whoa. Excuse you, camera. <laughs> yeah, fun game. Very cool. He played as a mosquito. But yeah. It's, 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 it's just hard when you got to... You have no one to blame but yourself. All right, what I missed there? Something cool? Uh, you missed Mr. Mosquito. Oh, I bet that's cool. Yeah, buddy, you, do you want this? This is way better shape than yours. I mean, I can't see it, but... Oh. One day you'll see it. It's in way better shape than yours. It's even still got heck my receipt in there. Yeah, look at that. Got the bonus. Oh, heck yeah, buddy. If you don't want it, put it aside. We'll we'll start working up a nice trade pile, and then eventually yeah. we'll we'll make a swap. Keep it keep it tucked away for me. You know, yeah, I'm proud enough to share. You know, I got my big, I got big mother truckers on the on the shelf. I don't care about a rusty <laughs> Final Fantasy 12. I don't care about that. Um, okay, mm. a couple. Of, I'm gonna. I have three more things to show. What do you have? I've got uh, more than three. So why don't let me go first? All right. 
So I'm, I'm going to give you three pickup stories. Actually, more like two pickup stories. We'll go through these relatively quickly. And then I've got uh, just a couple of other interesting things to show. One, sometimes not playing your games works to your advantage. So I bought this one new on Amazon over a decade ago. It's Shin Megami Tensei Devil Ooh. Summoner. The, what is it? Raido Kuzunoha versus the Soulless Army. Probably one of the longest uh, titles in my collection. And this puppy's still sealed. Uh, it's, it's never been never been opened. And at this point, if I'm going to play it, I'm probably just going to have to sell it off and buy a uh, an opened copy. But PS2 is the first generation of games where I start having sealed stuff. I don't really have anything pre-PS2 sealed. PS1, Super Nintendo, any of that. Um, and, and all the sealed stuff I have is all because I bought it at the time with intention to play it. And then decade or decades later i still haven't yet yeah that's interesting you know i have a sealed uh, persona 4 golden or persona 4 not golden um <laughs> and uh I, I thought i was like i bet that one will be a good one to show off i bet it's up there and uh no nobody wants that game my sealed copy is not it doesn't wow. even register on the list yeah it's not that crazy i thought it would be that might be because of the we'll have some vita stuff to show later and that might be yeah why. right because that and, and that's the version <laughs> that has golden right like it's only golden on Vita, yep. or am I wrong about that? Okay. No, it's golden on Vita. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so here, let me give you my other two pickup stories. One, this is a sad boy, no manual, but uh, Guitaru Man. Oh. Very cool rhythm game. This is one of those rare instances. Oh, sad. One of those rare instances where I wanted a game and found it at a thrift store. I went into a Savers, and there it was just a bunch of sports games and then guitaru man for a dollar 99 and this was not that long ago probably four or five years ago something like that which i guess is long in the grand scheme but well after the ps2's life cycle and i was so happy to find this because this game is not cheap but it's a really awesome like rhythm game that i was able to snag for just a couple bucks now i just gotta track down a manual for it nice dude I've heard a lot about that one. Didn't you? Did you stream that at some point recently? Mm -mm. I'm trying no, to I'm going. I, I will though for sure. I feel like somebody talked about it a lot recently, so I don't know. Hmm. Yep. All right, and then this is kind of my my big PS2 pickup story. So the game itself, Soul Calibur Three, and this is not a game that I particularly care about, but it's kind of I keep it because it's kind of meaningful. So what happened was, I was working. Uh, at a job somewhere around 2013 or so, 2014, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I was at the end of a workday just trolling Craigslist. And an ad came up with some excellent games in it, and it was just $5 a piece. And the ad was, it, it had like, it had Soul Calibur, it had Shadow Hearts, Xenosaga 2, Xenosaga 3, like, desirable mostly jrpgs and a couple fighting games and so i happened to catch this ad right when it went up message the person immediately they said oh we got dozens of responses but you were the very first person so we're giving you first dibs you can come Whoa. pick them up and i was like mm, yes and so i got there i bought them it was from this like 70 year old woman 75 she's relatively old and i got to talking with her because i was you know Oh, I mean, why are you selling these? Why, you know, do you have any other stuff that you're selling? And that, that was the key question. I said, do you have anything else that you're selling? And this is like kind of a sad story, if I'm being honest. But she said, yeah, we're selling all this stuff because my son, who was really into like anime, RPGs, stuff like that, he just passed away. Oh. And yeah, unexpectedly. And they're like, we don't know, you know, what any of this stuff is worth. We just, we're just trying to clear out his extra stuff. And so I said, I was like, okay, well, well, that sucks. But uh, do you need any help going through stuff? Because then immediately I felt, I was like, I got to give you more money for these. And she's like, no, no, you can have them for the five that we agreed to. I was like, well, do you need any help, you know, pricing stuff out? I'm familiar with the market. I can at least look at what you have. And so... I, look, I spent like two, three hours at their house that day, and I went back another day on the weekend and spent four or five hours basically going through this this guy's room and helping this this uh, older couple hmm. like 
understand what things should be priced at. And I was like, this stuff isn't worth anything. This is stuff you should sell on eBay. This stuff is like, if you bundle it up and put an ad on Craigslist, here's how much you can expect to get. And so Good they man, were just so cool. sweet. She, she was so nice. And you were so I, kept, nice. I kept a couple of those games and I keep this one, even though I don't really care that much about Soul Calibur, just because... I, I would feel bad getting rid of any of that stuff. Like, it's just, it felt good to to help them out and, like, do what little I can, right? Give yeah. a little bit of peace of mind to them. Yeah, good on you, man. That's a really good story. I'm glad you were able to help them out. And hopefully they were they were able to get a little more out of it than they uh, expected. I think they were, yeah. Very cool, dude. Um, All right. So I'm going to show off a couple more here. Okay. Okay accidentally turned off my light when I walked in the door earlier so <laughs> now we're in the dark but we still see me and we're good um maybe my two favorite games ever are on the system yeah this is the first one the dark cloud it's great I mean I'm just showing it because I like it yeah I have the greatest hits version Steve <laughs> I saw you balk at it yeah it's the greatest hits version what are you gonna do about it what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? it's not my original copy I bought this pre greatest hits got rid of that version before I collected had to get it back then I picked this up. This took me a while to find for a price because it, it it was really uh, up and down for a long time. It yeah. was roller coastering, like it would hit sixty and then it would bounce back down to like thirty and then hit twenty five for a day and a half and then up to forty five. It was all over the place. And I picked yep. it up for like twenty seven bucks a couple years ago. I don't even know what it goes for now because after I own these things, I hardly ever look again. But um. Yeah, but just played through it, actually. I finally finally found time in the old backlog to get through it uh, this past fall and had a blast. So love love the Dark Cloud series. Excited for the third one, which will never happen. Uh, I hope then, we get a third one at some point. Yeah, for sure. And then while I was gone, I don't know what I did with it. I thought I brought it in here. Oh, yeah. What about that? I got to grab that X-Files game we were peeking at earlier. And this, is, this doesn't belong to me. This is Brian's. He just, we were going to play and he left it at my house. But uh, today I own it. Doesn't, I don't think we have a manual in there, unfortunately. We still have our save over there, but uh, if it's complete, this is going for $100. What in the hell? When did that happen, you know? Yeah. It's, Jeez. you know, it's survival horror -y, so it got that survival horror bump. I hear you, man. I've got, actually, I do have two more things I'm gonna, I want to show real quick. I don't know. Please do. And, and this is sort of a nice, uh, I'm, I'm just, this is a straight up advertisement on my part. Have you heard of Printer Boy? You heard that name? Mm, no, I've okay. heard of printers and I've heard of boys. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, do you have issues with uh, keeping your consoles? You know, get, you have you have a couple cats. You get the cat hair, and then it gets all over. You get the dust. Is that a problem for you? Do you find yourself always meticulously cleaning them? Yeah, she gets dusty. Yeah, I have to. I have to recommend, and I have these for most of my consoles, but I have to recommend going to Printer Boy. I think it's an Etsy shop, and it might also be a URL now. But you can get these things, these dust covers, and they fit, they're form-fitted, they fit right over your your console. So here's a PS2, and mm. the reason I'm showing the PS2 is because the PS2 has got a, got a bit of a tricky layout, but as you can see, it's got the, you know, it'll fit right in there, it's got the groove, and what's nice, and I dropped it, oh, let me get it here, is that uh, it has a little pocket on the side, once it, once it fits nice over your thing, it's got a little slot for your memory card, it has Ooh. a slot in the back, so you leave this plugged in. It's got enough. It, it knows where all the wires go in. It fits on this on this nice and snug. And I've had these, and I got I brought two consoles too, so you could see how it fills out. So I got a mini PS2, the slim version. So I got that one. That's that's I got a PS2 in there, right? And so a lot of times, what happens? People come over to my house. They'll just be you know hanging out, and they'll be like, "Wait a minute, do you have fake consoles?" <laughs> Is this just did you bring the shoebox? Yeah, is this like are, is props for like a, a TV shoot? But no, there's a there's a PS2 in there. You can you can see there. It's got the like it's got that. it's got the outer the the outer piece shows all of the um you know where the controllers would go and that kind of thing. And I have the you know the PS1 one's kind of nice too. So again, I have these. They have 3DO. I have the 3DO ones. I have uh, uh, Wii U um, controller sleeve. You know, like the screen has a nice little sleeve for it too. So. Uh, I love these, man. I, and you order them; they, they ship from Mexico. They're about ten, twelve bucks a piece. Take about three weeks to get to you, but you know you build these up over time. Keeps your stuff really nice and dust free. I can't speak nice. highly enough of that stuff, man. Check it out. Do they do they have openings for the fans, or do you 
do no, you, you take them uh, off? When you yeah, use I them? take them off. Like if I'm gonna, because you know most of my consoles are not being played at once. So uh, if I'm gonna play one, like I'm in the middle of a PS2 game right now, and I take that old dust sleeve off the console for a couple weeks while I'm marching through a game and put it back on when I'm done. So hmm. yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't get one for something that's my everyday, right? My PS4 yeah. is probably you know I play that a lot. I'm not really <laughs> one for that yet, but eventually when it becomes one of the ones that uh, I play every once in a while and it gets dusty, get a get a dust sleeve for it. That's a lot more efficient than my current system, which is I lather all my consoles in Vaseline, and then whenever I want to play hmm. them, I squeegee them off and then play it, and then I re-Vaseline them. That does seem unnecessary. I will say that for it, but uh, yeah. if it works for you, it works for you, buddy. <laughs> do you have any, uh, like, whether you have them to show or not, do you have any just, like, uh, hidden gems, any diamonds in the rough there for PS2 that you can think of that you just want to encourage people to play or that people should check out uh you know i'm just a big stand for the dark clouds and people already know that so i'm sure that they've they've already you know they're sick of it there are a lot of um i'm finding recently there are a lot of horror slash survival survival horror games on that system that i wasn't aware of i played through cold fear not long ago oh yeah uh, with briz and and i can't remember which ones are ps2 exclusive or not but i played through that and then obscure is one that's uh fetching Mm. a high dollar too i have that one i should probably could have shown that off forgot about it um that's probably one of if not your priciest boy that's uh i might even have it on xbox but either way you're on ps2 obscure is going for 200 to three hundred dollars, about three hundred bucks, two fifty to three hundred. What? There was a lot that someone just sold on May twenty fourth that had Haunting Ground, Obscure, Obscure the Aftermath, Kuan, and Rule of Rose at auction. It sold for two grand. Jeez, then that's probably a good price. Yeah, no kidding. No, I Cheaper have it for Xbox. Sorry, I have Obscure for Xbox, and it goes it goes for about a hundred still. That's still uh, might see that one in a couple weeks. No kidding. Uh, so, okay, no, I, I'm out of PS2 talk. I've got uh, two recommendations here. One of them's not a recommendation. One of them is just like showing you the depths of my in my uh, my commitment to the system and hunting down games that I want to try. We'll say that. First up, I, there's so many just like random games I could pull and recommend to people, but here's one I want to encourage people to try: Dual Hearts. I've always thought this game was fun. That looks like uh, this. Is that, is that Link? <laughs> Okay, so I was going to say, if you want Zelda, but you've played Zelda, there's a PS2 Zelda. Because <laughs> uh, I thought Dark Cloud was PS2 Zelda, but geez, this is... This this is way more PS2 Zelda. Whoa. Super fun. I mean, it's a little corny, and it's a little cheesy, but um, uh, it you like hop into these different environments through like people's dreams and stuff, and yeah, it's just... I bought this one totally on a whim back in like 2005 or something like that, and... Yeah, I've, I've always thought this game was cool, and I've always tried to recommend it to people, because you just don't see it very often, but I know people love a good Zelda-like. Yeah, for sure. Dude, that's cool. That's really cool. All, All right. right, and my, my other recommendation here, um, I actually got a recommendation, and then just one little oddity in the collection. Don't judge me when you see this. There's a reason. So there's this game. <laughs> you weirdo. I'm sorry, I said I wouldn't. I'll tell you the name if I can pronounce it. It's Zero no Sukaima Muma ga Tsumugo Yokaze no Genso Kyoku. So this is <laughs> this is a vision. The game comes with a bonus disc. So you see that there's two discs in here. Normally there would just be one. Mm-hmm. The, the second disc is a side-scrolling shoot 'em up. That's kind of like um, kind of reminds me of like Cotton or something like that. Um, and it has really good music. So the, this is how hardcore I will be about hunting down interesting stuff on PS2 is I will literally look up special editions for visual novels to see if there are bonus games included. Very good idea. <laughs> wow. That's an interesting one. And you pronounced most of it, I think, pretty good. Yeah. No one will and know, then, <laughs> No one will challenge me on it, right? I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, So then this last one, just neat. I don't know that this is really adds anything. And obviously there's no way to verify it, but I can't see why someone would fake this. But I have a copy of Samurai Western and I bought this from a game store uh, a while back. But uh, on the inside, on the disc, 
it says property of SCEA CS. So Ooh. property of Sony Computer Entertainment America customer service is what I'm assuming. Perhaps. And it's very faint. It won't show up on camera, but right on, oh, it kind of does. That yellow. yellow writing ring, that also says property of SCEA US. And it has the punched barcode that you see for like, oh, not for yeah. resale games. So presumably this copy was used by the customer service department in Sony Computer Entertainment America to, I don't know, like test bugs and answer questions for people. Sure. Uh, and when I bought it, the, the person at the game store didn't realize that until they had already rung me up and they were like, oh, you probably just got a steal on that. That's, a, <laughs> that's pretty rare. And it's like, I don't actually think that there's anyone out there in the world that is collecting customer service copies of games, <laughs> but I just think it's so cool that it even exists. For sure. That is neat. And it's Atlas, too. I don't know much about that game, but I'm sure it's fun. It's real, real, wild, real wild, real cool, yeah. Yeah, right on there. Is that did we PS2? I think I think we PS2. Let's jump right in and do some PS3 because you know what? I probably should just take off because I know you've got a lot of PS3 to get through. Yeah, let me go. Let me get my wheelbarrow of PS3 games in the room. That way we can get cracking on that. Now <laughs> I see you have a big just a row of them. Chilla. Yeah. So I haven't really done any active collecting for ps3 i've just sort of like just bought games that are interesting to me i i don't know how to like fully articulate the difference but i, I everything i have i've just acquired because i wanted to try it out while it was a, a current game basically but there's a lot of neat stuff on ps3 seems to be uh and so explain to me how you don't have a ps3 at this point i'm con i'm legitimately confused right so Again, I uh, around 2010 or so, I really wanted to get an Xbox because my, my, my buddies that I just met through work were all X-Bros. They got on the 360, they, got, they did the live party, they played the Gears and the Halos together. And I didn't really have much of a gaming uh, community or uh, support group, if you will, so uh, I, felt, I felt out of place. Now, I, I burned through a ton of PS3 games. I, beat, I had, like, you know, in terms of, like, games beaten, it's probably, like, the, the console I've beaten, like, the third or fourth most games on. I've... <laughs> <laughs> I beat a lot of uh, PS3 games when I had one, but uh, then I just traded it in for I got an Xbox 360 and uh, mm -hmm. did that. So I, that was before I collected. And, and at the time, I really just wanted to collect cartridge stuff. I didn't care about the disc games, especially the modern stuff. Like right now, I don't really care to collect an Xbox One or PS4 stuff. I just get what I want. So it wasn't so much of a big deal. I'm sure down the road that'll change because I always tend to look back fondly on a library and want to yeah. want to load up on it. But for the PS3, no, right now I am without. Not to say I'll ever not get it, but now that the prices are the way they are, I'm kind of okay not having one. Interesting. I mean, I've been really nostalgic for this period in gaming, like PS3 360 era. So I've been looking a little more at, at trying to finally close some gaps and do some like collecting proper on on ps3 but uh sadly for you i mean there's not a lot of like hardcore collectible games on ps3 probably the the most expensive one that i can think of is uh uh what is it called hmm. is it hell and damnation or something like that it's a first person shooter that's several hundred dollars is, is Lair but, one of those games that people are after? Or is that just something Pete Dore always talks about? No, that one just kind of got a uh, a little bit of a bump recently, as everything did when PS3 mm -hmm. kind of had its moment. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, the the stack of my, my best boys here is kind of all just like recent, recent jump ups. Uh, as, as PS3 hit its stride when they announced that the PSN was closing, these all oh, kind of yeah. went up a little bit. That old thing. So these two are like kind of tied for my number five, I think. And so much of the, the PS3 stuff is like kind of between 70 and a hundred dollars is the more expensive stuff. So this is all roughly equivalent, but we've got Osiris Wrath, which is a great game. And then Class of Heroes 2G, which I have not opened yet to try, but I'm anticipating checking it out uh this one i think you had to order from a specific like website or something like that 
Uh, but very, Weird. very fun games. Both of these relatively expensive. Osiris Wrath is good. I think it's a little cheaper on 360, though, if you actually just want to play it. And you've got no qualms about breaking the seal, huh? You'll break a seal. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll break a seal. I mean, yeah. I... They're meant to be played, I, right? I don't, I don't mind it a bit. If I happen to know that a game is, like, three times as expensive sealed... I'll probably just sell that one off, buy an open copy, but yeah. most of the time, I'm too lazy to do that. I'll just rip that bad boy right open and play it. I'm with you there. Would I do that on an NES game or something like that? Probably not. Yeah. But, yeah. You're not, now, you're, now you're dancing around some like ancient artifact. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, next most bendy boy, another really cool game, 3D.Game Heroes. Uh, this is a Zelda 2D Zelda clone. Have you seen this one before? I have not, man. I'm not familiar at all. Yeah, so it is. this is just straight up. It plays exactly like the NES Legend of Zelda, but it's all in this voxel style, and the gimmick is that your sword can grow like really large and really long, so Diggity. your sword slash can cover the entire screen. Cool. So, really fun game on PS3 there. I, I That one I've long thought was going to get spendy, but it just took its, took its time. Yeah, I hear you, man. Oh, I see Charlie Th- Bailey and uh, Good Vibe Collecting in the chat. Hey, guys, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, hey, everybody. And Top Spot asks, did you see Puppeteer? You did. I don't have it in the stack, but we do have Puppeteer. Uh, next up here, interesting. You wouldn't expect this game to be expensive, but it kind of makes sense because of the PSN closure fears. This is Best of PlayStation Network Volume 1. And this one is still sealed, too. I bought this just to have a physical copy of Tokyo Jungle, which is a game that I really love. And pretty understandable that this one went way up in price because with the PSN closing, everyone's like, oh, I need to get a physical copy of the games I like. Um, and Sound Shapes has its own kind of audience of fans, and Fat Princess does too. So, there's a P- um, isn't there a PSP Fat Princess as well? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yep. But I think most people grab this one for Tokyo Jungle just to have that one physically. Uh, we got a uh, little El Shaddai, Ascension of the Metatron. Man, I feel like I'm Very... in an alternative universe. I know nothing about these. <laughs> this is like a third-person hack and slash. It's visually incredibly interesting, and it has a real unique tone. But um, I thought that the actual combat was a little stiff or a little simple. But it's so interesting, and it's so... There's nothing else like it, so it's still, I think, worth checking out. Although, a lot of people also seem to agree, because that one went up a lot. Yeah. And then my my most spendy boy, I think, is Africa. This is another Netsume game. I've seen this around. This is Pokemon Snap, but with actual animals in, like, the savanna. So it's like Zoo Snap. Yep, you go around taking pictures of rhinos and giraffes and hippos and stuff like that pretty fun game pretty novel this one was like for a long time this was the collectible game on ps3 when it was like 40 dollars, and then it's just kind of crept and crept and crept um, oh, yeah. yeah neat game interesting man and how many ps3 games do you have what were your stats on that one yeah so i have about 145 or so give or take uh so a pretty solid library all, all my sony consoles i tend to have a lot of games for i think i'm always kind of generally sony first when it comes to just playing stuff yeah, um, I mean, they have a lot of you know you, you have the uh, your rpgs in there a lot more often and things like that it makes a lot of sense yep uh some of the other interesting kind of notable ones that people are more likely to recognize as collectible we've got dragon guard three yeah, i'm a little ashamed go. to admit i have not popped that one open yet still sealed because I haven't played through one and two yet, but uh, this one I picked up optimistically because I want to play it. And do you I, know, I, like, too? I like these uh, these blue tabs up at the top, the or the blue artworks for the real late PS3 games. And yeah, I do. I own Dragon Card one and two. Those are getting pricey. Yeah, we. I, it's because of near replicant, right? But mm-hmm. yeah, I i have played dragon guard one a bit i bought that from a blockbuster actually but uh, i haven't played dragon guard two yet all right so we've got uh, a couple of more interesting boys one my pickup story i told this one on stream but for anyone not familiar with uh, the story the this is splatter house on oh, ps3 go. i got lucky with this one and 
when it spiked i happened to find it at a game store before it shot up uh so it was still priced at the old price lucky dog marked at 15 when it's more like an 80 90 dollar game and i was happy to jump on it i slept on this one for a long time too i used to see this one all the time for 10 and i was like yeah i'll find it i'll find it and then i almost missed it but thankfully i was able to make up for my mistake right at the tail end there so that's what i that's really cool. want I, just, I love the splatter house cover art i i only own the uh actually one of the more i guess expensive versions which is on the turbo graphics i'm sure we'll cover that in a couple weeks but uh man those genesis ones are even tough uh, you're lucky to have any splatter house in your house you know what i mean yeah no kidding splatter your own house oh. and this one does have the i think the original splatter house is unlockable in that one so oh that's cool kind of a two for one right on Oh, it has all, uh, Charlie Bailey says it's all three Sega Genesis games on the disc. I thought it only had the first one, so that's even better. I should just get that one, but then I'd have to buy a PS3. So now I'm setting myself really far back. We'll see. <laughs> uh, and then just uh, kind of a recommendation for people, public service announcement, Enslaved. I love this game, and I want more people to, to check this one out. Have you played this one before? No, I haven't. So it's kind of a character action... Uh, melee combat type of game uh, but with some uncharted style platforming and a lot of really beautiful environments so made by ninja theory and it's just like a really excellent like kind of one and done no sequels type game so check that one out if you can ever find it good recommendation yeah and then my uh my kind of i have an oddball and then i have a i have a sad story i'm, I'm mad at myself oh okay but here's my oddball. Is, have you ever played the, the Strider remake on PS3? Was it only on PS3? Mm, it might have been. It was digital everywhere other than in Japan. It got a physical version. So I want to say I played a version of it, but I, you know, obviously I didn't have a PS3. It's uh, it's in the Metroid Castlevania style. Right, right. Uh, and yeah, really excellent game. And there's a physical copy of it in uh, that you can import. This, I think, is the only way to get it physically. Nice. All right, so let me show you why I'm mad at myself. Let's see it, buddy. It's okay. Don't be too mad. We're here. Before I do, here's the the sad story. This is the original backwards compatible PS3 that I have, but it, it stopped. It stopped reading discs. That's what happened to mine. And those those puppies are spendy now. Those are several hundred bucks. Ugh to get a backwards compat one again so end of an era four ps2s i'm okay but i i didn't even realize this was a problem for me uh until we were gonna do this stream so i've got the dark souls collector's edition uh, which is cool in and of itself but i went to pop it open today and i didn't realize it's just full of bees (laughs) 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 oh It's got a it's got a greatest hits hiding in there. Ah, uh, a perfectly fine greatest hits. We love to see it. Honestly, I've been making a lot of good greatest hits jokes. I don't really actually care about greatest hits. I don't have them in my collection, but I don't actually have like a judgmental opinion on them. But it's more like I don't think that this collector's edition came with a greatest hits copy, so it's a mismatch. Yeah, I agree with that. That that's a little aggravating for sure. I'm, I'm hiding I, I probably what actually probably happened is I probably had that and I put it into the collector's edition tin and put that over like not with the rest of my games specifically to hide it from myself and then I forgot <laughs> 100% I, I would believe of, uh, that happened if it makes you feel any better I can send you this copy of Big Mother Truckers <laughs> and uh, you can put that in there instead you want this? no that means that means too much to you you can keep your Big Mother Truckers <laughs> I'm actually excited to see if that disc will, will play. We're going to try it out. That's... Uh, I would like to hear how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> but not see. I understand. But yeah, so that's that's the PS3. Um, cool. Uh, we, we can wind into PS4, but I'm curious. I didn't ask you for the other consoles. I know you don't collect for PS3 so much. Yeah. Are you still actively hunting anything down on PS1, PS2? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, on the PS1, a game that has eluded me for years, I 
played it a lot at a buddy's house when, you know, as a teenager. I don't even remember if it's good or not. I come across the sequel, I have the sequel, but I do not have the first medieval. And I'd love to have that. Uh, yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. So that's that's one that I'm actively searching for, and I think it's still within a price that doesn't make me throw up when I see it. So we'll just we're gonna have to bite pretty soon probably, but I'd like to have that one. PS2, you know, I just kinda take it as they come. I'm not really looking for anything, I just kinda come across something that looks interesting and pick it up. It's uh it's kind of a casual system to collect for, so uh, there's so many games on it. There's like almost 2,000 games in that thing. That's great. Yeah, it's just good to scoop them up however and wherever you can get them. Yeah, for sure. So good stuff. I, th- I say we move on into the PS4. I say we keep the train rolling. Let's do it. All right. Let me uh, advance the slideshow here. Now, that is a lot of PS4 games, man. And I want to say that's <laughs> got to be more than your PS3 lineup, right? Yeah, I was surprised. So my PS4 sort of stealth became my my biggest library. I have more games for PS4 than I do for any other console. Uh, and it's somewhere right around 300 games. And what's crazy is I also feel like there's more PS4 games that still on my wish list than most other consoles too. PS4 truly is the new PS2. Like it is just an endlessly large library. Yeah, dude, it is huge and full of good quality stuff too. And uh, oops, ran out of. I think I'm out of pictures, but um, <laughs> but yeah, no, the, and that's a that's a really good looking collection too. Very handsome. Is, is there a vid for this one? No, I don't think that there is. Oh, there is. I think there is, buddy. You you rolled your horse. Let me <laughs> let me let me drive. You're drunk. There we go. <laughs> There it is. Look there. Again, I slowed it down so that the the jitter in the frame rate will make everyone in the chat throw up violently, but uh, it's a pretty solid, pretty solid group there. As you said, about 300, or over 300. Yeah. Yep, and, about right at 300. And you're catching these, I mean, most of them, I'm, I'm guessing, firsthand, right? You getting a lot of secondhand PS4 games? Uh, it comes and goes. A, a decent chunk of them ended up being limited run things that I picked sure. up, and then most of these I just bought because I was interested, new when they came out. But I also do enjoy just looking through some pre-owned, you no know, buy two get ones. Same kind of as I talked about on PS2. So, yeah, there's there, there's a healthy mix, but all of them again purchased intentionally, not like you know I got a lot of fifty games on Craigslist right. or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So it's, I mean, very, very good. Very good. Now, so my PS4 story, I'll go ahead and start my story here while we, because I don't have a, a three-minute long video scrolling shelves for my PS4 game. Uh, I'm only a recent PS4, uh, I guess, person. I, I shared it with, um, he was in the chat earlier, he's probably taken off, but citizen, he was Citizen Gamer in the chat, Riz in the Discord, Brian at work. He and I shared, we live in the same town, we shared a PS4. We called it Petey. We bought it actually from another guy at work. So we got a <laughs> second hand, this is a third hand PS4 that I have. So we, we shared it for about a year and a half. So it would spend some time at his house, some time at my house. When a new game came out, it was like, you want to play it first? You want to play this one first? Or whatever. <laughs> and then eventually he wanted to get a, uh, I guess, an Xbox Series X. And uh, I said, I can help you finance that. Let me buy, we called it Petey. Let me buy Petey off of you and uh, pay my half, and I'll just own it. So now I own the PS4, so I don't have a ton of games for it. Maybe 10, mm. 10 or 11. But I, in that span, because I was I waited so long, I didn't play, you know, I, I didn't uh, get to take a chance on anything as it came out. I was relegated to the very curated best ofs. So I end up having a, a very dense list of PS4 or PlayStation exclusives that are quite, quite mm. outstanding. So I'm looking here at your, um, what's, was that Annapurna? Is that the name of that box set? Yeah, yeah, and I'll pull those out and I'll show them to you here in a little bit. But cool, cool. Excellent me, games. I think I have, uh, it's PS4. Uh, yeah, so there's my PS4 game. So that's a pretty good list there. I got the, you know, the Death Stranding, the uh, Ghost of Tsushima, God of War, Horizon, Last of Us 2, Nier Automata, P, uh, Persona 5, and Ratchet nice. and Clank. Yeah, I'm missing a few there that I want to get still. I, I played Spider-Man from a borrowed disc, so I played it, don't own it. But um, man, it's a pretty good, pretty good lineup if you ask me. So, but very, very small, very tiny. So that's that's a nice tight library though. I actually like it a lot. 
Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. It's the nicest thing you can say about someone's collection that is less than 12 games. So I appreciate that. <laughs> but let's get into it. Show us some stuff that's going to make us excited for it. What's What you mm. got? What makes us want to rob you even more than... Well, really, honestly, even more than that stack of Saturn games behind you. I'm sure that, that's, that's a pricey <laughs> bunch. That's, that's for a future stream. Uh, sure. Yeah, so let, let's rock through. I mean, there's not a lot. PS4 is sort of still fresh, right? So things are shaken out uh in terms of value and whatnot so some of these are are kind of what you'd expect but uh who knows what'll be the valuable stuff several years from now uh but some games i know people are real interested in got the uh the two shantays mm. on ps4 now i know most people and go for the switch version i know I and do. they're worth more on switch i think but i kind of a trophy guy so I usually pick up the multi-plats on PS4. I tend to like them more that way. Uh, also, I see Sancho Panda in the chat. Hi to Sancho Panda. Also, we missed a couple other people. Pax Main, welcome in. Yo, Pax, Pax Main, Main trying to warn, uh, trying to warn us that our PS4s will all die they at some might. point. They might do it. You gotta, you'll have to put them on life support, buddy. Keep it going. And I know Sancho Panda, that's your, that's your eco speedrunning uh, cohort, yeah. It is. He is now actually the as of uh, about what a week ago, Sancho. He's the world record holder. Congratulations, Sancho Panda. Very good work. And 5th Gen Mook is here. What's up, buddy? Hmm. Classic All right. Ne next up, we got uh, a limited run game. This one's still sealed because I played the digital version, but I like this game a lot. Firewatch? I want this on Switch so bad. It's, it's it worth yet. it, buddy. I'm sure it's spendy, but uh, whenever you can get it, Switch. it. I think it's been promised a hundred times. Ooh. I think it's, I think it's uh, I'm waiting for limited run to do it if they haven't already. I could be confused. Let me look. Mm. But yeah, I do well, want to I want to play that real bad. While you're looking, I was surprised my top 2 most valuable. Okay, actually, I'm giving you my top 5 and then I'm giving you a bonus one and my bonus one is actually my most valuable. Okay. But <laughs> And there's a reason for that cuz it's it's just so weird. It, it's its own interesting story. Uh, this one really surprised me how expensive it is. Blue Reflection. I just bought this one on a lark because I like RPGs. You know, I like the pastel colors. It looked visually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, haven't popped it in yet. Suddenly, randomly, over a hundred dollar game must have been a low print run or something. This is one of those that I bought it for cheap, put it on the shelf, waiting to play it, and then one day someone mentioned it, and I was like, oh, turns out I have something with a little bit of juice behind it. Nice man. Sometimes it pays to get weird, you know. Mm hmm. That's why it's now's the time, right? On these, on, especially on PS4, now's the time to seek stuff out because it's mm -hmm. it's only going to go up. It's not going to get cheaper. What was the name cheaper. of that game, by the way? Blue Reflection. Blue Reflection. Right. And then my number one here is Gravity Rush Remastered. I forget the exact details of this. I think that uh, people say it was an Amazon exclusive, but this is an excellent game on the Vita that I love, love, love. And so I wanted to get the console version. And this one in particular is uh, kind of hard to come by. People can't find it. It's a remake by Bluepoint, who also did the Eco Shadow of the Colossus collection on PS3. They did the Demon Souls remaster on PS5. So very good company and uh, cool collection. But yeah, randomly, again, also very valuable. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this one gets another print run at some point, though. I'm not sure why it was so low print. Right on. <laughs> Sancho got a shout out. He's dipping now. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. And now I'm going to give you my the, the bonus one. Now, I'm this is actually I'm revealing uh I'm revealing a pickup. I'm pulling from the pickup shelf, not from the actual shelf. So, okay. I'll, I'll be too. doing be doing a long form pickup video on June 12th. I'll be doing a 12-hour stream and there'll be some pickups in there. And this will be one of them. So everyone here is getting a, a first taste. But as a part of that, you're obligated to go to that Twitch link and uh, follow up to check out the actual pickup video when it goes live. But this is uh, this is an interesting one. It's a game called Tamashi. Hmm. Do you have any idea about this game at all? Have you heard of it? Do you know about it? I, I would be blown away if you do, but I'd be happy if you did. Sir, I have I have no no conscious knowledge of this. At all. <laughs> so I'll let you take a peek at this one on eBay while I talk about it. Okay. But 
Let me ask you this. Have you heard of the game Poop Slinger? <laughs> Are you you're referencing where I'm from? Just because I'm uh, from the mountains nope. doesn't mean we played Poop Slinger. Come on. No, nope, it's no. a it's a real game. Uh it's so this game is the same thing as as Poop Slinger, but um I I'll say it doesn't sound very that fun. out loud. So uh, what happened was on right around Halloween last year, this very fake looking uh, account from uh, from a company called Limited Rare Games popped up and they were very cryptic and they were talking in broken English and they were saying like, you know, come to our site, buy this game. And you go to their site, their website was very sketchy. It looked like, you know, a GeoCities page from the early 90s. And to buy the game, you literally just paypal them, like friends and family, $35. So you had no guarantee you'd get anything. And it was only up and available for sale for a couple hours. I happened to catch it and, and buy it. And then it went off sale. It's gone. And then it didn't ship for over half a year. And then it just finally came. So this, because of that, it's extremely, extremely low print run. And when it first started showing up, uh, copies were selling on eBay for $1,000 for the first couple that appeared because people knew that they missed it. And it's normalized down now to about 500 But uh, I, I knew that this would be a real game. And I mentioned that Poop Slinger game because that same thing happened a year or two before this with Poop Slinger, where it was like it, everyone thought it was an April Fool's joke, but then the game actually showed up and ironically became the most collectible ps4 game right so so when the same thing happened again i was like this is the same company doing the same thing i will bite this time it's 35 dollars. it's no risk right yeah and it showed up and it's real <laughs> and so this is actually the most expensive ps4 game and it's it's worth a lot because you had to trust you weren't getting scammed to buy it now, is that still sealed yeah it is yeah, okay. ha haven't popped it open. You can hear there's a disc in there, yeah, but yeah, hopefully e not bees. Even if there's not, the sealed copies are selling for 500, so just don't open it. Dude, yeah, leave that alone for sure. Cool, man. You always you're always telling me stuff that just that's just crazy. You you live in a different collector sphere when you're digging into the PS4, PS3 stuff. That's not been in my wheelhouse, man. It's weird. I mean, you just had to be right place, right time. I happened to be checking Twitter at the time that the hubble hubble hullabaloo for this was going on so no doubt. just it's just more of an interesting story than anything else this this game tamashi this is on itch you can go to itch.io play this game for free there's no reason <laughs> to have a ps4 version of it but oh, well. but it, it's real collectors what a bunch of idiots <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, aren't we all yeah you got but else? uh yeah i just want to pop those those annapurna collections up oh yeah show that So I have I have two, and I don't intend to have two forever. But uh, Annapurna is one of my all-time favorite publishers. They're like modern indie games, and they're they're sort of like curating games of a certain style or a certain vibe. They they kind of want to be the premier indie publisher, but and so they release these collections, uh, and this one. It comes in like this fake book that slides out right here. You can see the games there, but it has two of my all-time favorite games on it. Games that I've talked about a lot. Uh, one of them is a disc for Outer Wilds. And then one of them is a physical copy. Oh yeah, there's Outer Wilds. And then it also has a physical copy of uh, one of my other all-time favorite games. Uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts. But in this collection, this is also the only physical PS4 way to get Telling Lies. You also get What Remains of Edith Finch, Donut County, Kentucky Route Zero, all sorts of interesting stuff. And so they they released this like premium collection in this like fake book. And so I, I jumped on it because I love these games so much. But then they released a different version of it that has actual PS4 cases, like each with their own unique artwork. Yeah. And so I bought this one, and I think ultimately I'd rather have this one than the book version. So eventually I'll get rid of that one. I don't know when or how. I haven't emotionally given it up yet. But <laughs> yeah, 
Outer Wild and Sayonara Wild Hearts are really why I picked these up. I just love those games so, so, so much. Yeah. I know our friend, uh, I don't know if you still watch it or not, but Caleb, uh, J. Ross, huge fan as well, especially uh, for a few of those in there. So good stuff, man. But, yeah. Just very cool that not only do they kind of like selectively publish good indie games but then also to release like these really nice collector That's quality nice. collections like, that is awesome. nice that looks good on the shelf like a lot of collector stuff looks gaudy and tacky and, but that that's nice that looks like yeah. it's good in a library really love those and for some of my favorite games it's like such a win-win no doubt no diggity no <sighs> doubt you know i was curious because i you know i didn't really want to get too deep on my ps4 collection because it's not it's basically non-existent but i did discover that uh just now that my uh highest priced game and of course it fluctuates constantly it's very it's close to being not the highest but you wouldn't expect it based on the picture but deadpool mm-hmm. that's the one that by really like a dollar What's and a half. For? yeah because i thought it was like you know maybe like 50 bucks but it's wow. like a little bit more than ghost of tsushima right now <laughs> and uh <laughs> i thought that was funny because you don't i wouldn't expect a licensed uh superhero game to have that much draw <laughs> but here we are I haven't played it. No, nope. uh, I've heard it's decent though, so maybe one day. Heck yeah! But hey, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you build this collection out. I'm telling you, it's, it's a good system to collect for. Yeah, maybe I'll do it. I mean, I do like the PS4 quite a bit. A lot of do I have to say hidden? Gen- I almost said it. But yeah. a lot of um, hard to uncover turquoise. <laughs> Uh, and Pax Main in the chat asked, did Annapurna publish Journey? They do publish the more recent ports of Journey, yes. Good call. What, um, what's next, man? We got some VR stuff. Do you got any VR stuff? No. I'd love to see it, though. What you got? All right. Well, just, I, I mean, this is kind of like a, my favorite slash the most valuable boys. This is just my my pitch for good games. Picture. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to be all your face now. Yeah. So, first uh, first things first, I have about... How many here? About 70 VR games. I oh. actually was, for a brief moment many years ago, entertaining the idea of getting them all, all the PSVR games, because they were coming out slow and reasonable. Uh, but then the it just ramped up tons of different versions of psvr games started coming out in like other regions like there's a lot more in pal than there are in the states and uh, what was like kind of just like i eh, might as well i'm already kind of doing it because i love vr so much turned into a um no nah, i'm not i'm not gonna do that <laughs> it's yeah. not gonna happen it's hard to collect in situ i i, do, I really want to get psvr but i look up the prices the other day and i'm like i don't know if i want that man you know there's other vr options now this is a little uh, older, I mean, still, I'm sure it holds up fine enough, but I don't know. Maybe I'll save my money for another VR option. Heck yeah. Road. But but we got some interesting ones here. Uh, Paper Beast. This is one that came recently. That is, uh, it's sort of elevated right now because it just showed up about a month ago, and so people that missed the limited run window on it are paying the the crazy money for it because this is limited run published. Yeah. But this is a. Uh, this is this is uh, like artsy kind of game, exactly my type of deal, you know, like like an eco or the Shadow of the Colossus type of mostly uh, non-spoken dialogue, a lot of beautiful environments and like inferred storytelling stuff like that. But it's made by Eric Chahi, for, who did Another World, and so yeah, this is this was for a long time. This was the VR game that I wanted to play the most, and then they announced a physical version, so that is awesome. As soon as I plug in my VR again, I'll play that cool a couple other limited run boys that are interesting we got polybius which is mm. like a real neat arcade game very intense uh it's like you're driving down a tunnel as in vr as you play it but a lot of fun I, I played that one for a couple hours and then one i've wanted to play forever but i haven't gotten around to yet thumper yeah. it's like a real intense dark rhythm game uh, and i've heard that the vr mode on this is just like absolutely phenomenal i've played it non-vr but never I didn't even know there was a VR. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And randomly, this is sort of the most collectible game on PlayStation VR, Job Simulator. I think this is the perfect game to introduce people to VR. Right. Um, like, Re- you're, sta- you're stationary, you're yeah. doing, it's got a good sense of humor, it's fun. Uh, but for some reason, the physical copies of this dried up, and then it became 100 bucks. Uh-huh. 
bummer. Sad, sadness. That is sad. And yeah, Top Spot mentions uh, Minter for Polybius. It's uh, Jeff Minter, so like, um, like Tempest. Oh, right. And then just a couple other recommendations. Two good games that I want to uh, encourage people to play. One in VR is Ghost Giant. Very touching, like little... Uh, like uh, toy box style environmental puzzle game very very heartwarming story there and then moss uh, any chance i have to pitch moss is just an adorable puzzle platformer where you play as this adorable little mouse and it's beautiful unique it's uh specific to vr so some good some good stuff on that console yeah i've heard of moss that's one i've been that's been recommended to me i'd like to play it sometime if i ever get a vr machine i'll do it but uh, yeah there's there's tons of cool right? stuff yeah it's vr only i mean it's i mean, I mean it's not I, exclusive to playstation vr was my question. oh no 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 it's on other vr headsets right 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 yeah cool cool so that was psvr man i'm 70 i didn't even know there were 70 titles out there i mean that's got to be most of the library no no it was at a time hmm. but there's there's tons especially again if you count pal there's so many um because there's there's a publisher called Perp Games that produces all sorts of stuff uh, in PAL and in the states, but more stuff in PAL. So, Perp. Uh, m- more to find on that one, but uh, still very cool, very cool. All right, what are we doing next? PSP. PSP. Let's do the PSP. Um, I have I have a small picture of my PSP collection. You sent <laughs> images for this stuff, and for some reason, it's not showing up. I'll have to go dig through your folder, but... Oh, good. You know, there's mine. So, I have a very mild, mild collection. I do have my Medieval Resurrection. So, I have basically all but the first Medieval at this point. I have nice. uh, I have the Silent Hill Origins for PSP as well. You can't have enough Silent Hill Origins in this day and age, buddy. That's going to be currency when it all goes south. We'll just be trading Silent Hill Origins. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. Um, I do have um, me and my Katamari, uh, both U.S. and Japan version, and uh, I think both of those came from the same guy, Musty Hobbit, who I nice. think I got a few of these games from. I have the Castlevania there, so yeah, tight little collection. I'm not trying to get too crazy with the PSP, but I do like it. I had a few more games here, but I'm trading those off to a guy in the chat, Round 2 Gaming, for um, a bigger and better thing that I'll show off in a future episode. So, Ooh, yeah. interested to hear that. I have a suspicion that I know what system it's on based on some recent pictures he's been posting. <laughs> Don't be spoiling things now. That's going to be a fun discussion. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> anything, but uh, anything. Right. I'm, I'm seeing some doubles here. Two yeah. Capcom Classics collections, two Ape Escapes. What's the story? Well, there's that's actually two different Capcom Classics collections. You can tell oh, one's a, a one and a two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the two Ape Escapes, one of those is sealed for some reason. And I think both of them are worth <laughs> nothing. So I don't, I think, um, I even got the second one in a lot, the unsealed one in a lot. So I just ended up having to, I'd be happy to get mm-hmm. rid of it someday. So, uh, and then the third birthday over there being a, that's another big one. So that's uh, pricey boy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is, it is. I don't know where all of your, I'm going to have to dig through the, I, don't worry too much if the pictures aren't showing there. I, I know the set. numbers here. I am mad. I've got, well, I'm not. So, so upset right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got about 125 or so PSP games. 120, something like that. And maybe it's your videos. Oh, there it is. We got it, buddy. Hey, we got it. All right, talk away. So, so how about it? 120 or so PSP games. And this is another system that I have a lot of fondness for. I, I was just the right age to really love PSP. It's right around the same nostalgia as that 360 uh, PS3 era I was talking about before. So. I, I did pretty good on it when it came out, and I haven't actually picked up much PSP stuff in the last couple of years, so I feel like I need to do some real deep digging to look into the library, see what more uh, what more is out there that I'm interested in, in picking up, because I, I have a lot of what I want, and there's one thing for sure I want that I'll show you in a sec, but uh, I feel like I don't know what I would still want yet. Like I have to learn what the full library is to understand what my gaps are but i know there are gaps that makes sense to me i just uh i I got my psp from a kid down the street Uh, it was a yard sale and he was selling Mm. for 10 bucks 
and I was like, you know, I haven't had a PSP, let me grab this. And I got home, and the screen, the screen had uh, lines, horizontal lines going all the way. Ah, boo. So that was actually the first, like, significant screen replacement surgery I've ever conducted. I found a good little tutorial video there on the old YouTube. Nice. It worked perfect, man. We got a, a near brand new PSP looking PSP screen there, so it worked out pretty good. So I enjoy the PSP. I haven't delved into collecting it too too hard, but I'm really still in discovery mode with it. You know what I need is I need a SNES drunk for PSP. I need a PSP drunk YouTube channel where I can go through and be like, yep, nope, yep, 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 nope. I don't see a ton of that. That'd be pretty good. I feel like PSP is one of the least talked about. For sure. Like contemporary consoles or handhelds. Other than Metal Jesus, he loves it. He plays racers on it yeah. nonstop. But you don't really see a lot of other people talking about the RPGs and some of the Japanese only import stuff that you want to play and you know. I'm I'm want, I want to get weird with it. That's what I'm here for. I want the weird. And speaking give of me weird. That, give me that weird weird. Alright, I'll show you a weird. I just played this one not too long ago. This is uh Chili Con Carnage on the PSP. It plays how would you describe this game? It's just third-person uh, shooter, but with slow time. So every time you every time you jump, it slows time, and it does like a <laughs> Matrix-style Neo move every time. And so it's co pretty cool in that way because it's constant shooting dudes. But it gets really tough. And the final boss in this game was like beating this final boss. I'm probably going to have it on my epitaph. Like it was like here lies Trav. He meant well. He also beat Chili Con Carnage. That'll be <laughs> But, um, you know, not uh, not necessarily a cheap game either. No, no, it's not. It's not at all. I don't know. I don't. I brought three. I don't know where they rank with each other, but uh, I did bring my three. I guess greatest uh, or biggest draws, if you will. Mm. You got one to share there? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna pack two for one here. Give us a two. Uh, actually, I have four in total to show in terms of value, but some of them kind of group together nicely. First up. Got them East games. Oh, These really no. shot up in price. I wish I had uh, and I have played East one and two Chronicles. I haven't played seven yet because I played East one. I never got around to playing East two, and I wanted to play the series in order. So I'm only eight East games behind. But uh, yeah, I am happy to have have them east boys and those are those really shot up. I don't have the like the premium editions on these, but uh, even just these copies are not uh, not cheap. I hear you. Um let me see here. I was going to pull something up real quick because I just realized something about a game that's in my lap and I didn't know. Hold on one second. <laughs> that's why we do these, right? So you can learn. I just was like, what? Okay. It's not it's not crazy more exorbitant. So I do have um third birthday. Yeah. Parasite Eve three technically. Yep. And I've not quite finished. God, so much glare. I'm so sorry. I've not quite finished the uh, the second one on the PlayStation One just yet because um, I got stuck. But I just realized that this is sealed, and I bought it for nine dollars two years ago, and it's going for I guess sealed now. It's like almost a hundred. Yeah, that game shot way up. Yeah, I don't think the guy that sold it to me knew it was sealed either. It was in a game store. And uh, mm. I don't even think he had it priced. I was like, how much for this? He was like, oh, no, like nine, ten bucks. I was like, you say nine bucks? I always take the, slow, the lowest one. <laughs> so that's cool. Now I'm worried. Now I'm really, I mean, it's only 20 bucks more sealed, so I'll probably crack it open and play it. But Weird. Interesting. Yeah, I also bought that one back when it came out. Have you played? Do you, do you like that game? Uh, I like the first one a lot. And uh, playing mm. through the second one, like it okay. Got tough. But if the third, what's yeah. the third one like? Is it like the first? Or like nah, it's, it's nothing like the the first two. And honestly, I don't want to color your opinion of it, but I didn't I didn't love the third birthday. Okay, I've heard that from a lot of people, to be honest. So that's okay. I, I still want to try it. I'm still curious. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, my next one here. I could have pulled the whole trilogy out, but I just grabbed the third one. This is Legend of Heroes Three: Song of the Ocean. Very uh, for, at the time, a very obscure franchise. The Legend of Heroes uh, has really shot up in popularity after Trails of Cold Steel hit it big. Um, but these were the ones that were kind of the, the early ones to be localized for the states. And this whole trilogy is hard to come by, but this one in particular was a low print run. First one's fairly common. The second one called Prophecy of the Moonlight Witch. That one is spendy-ish, but this one is kind of the, 
the big daddy, the triple digits, one of them. And uh, sadly, I have not got around to playing it because I haven't played. I want to play the series in order. So, God, don't you hate that? I'm all, I'm always a in order guy. Yeah, and I just never you. play anything. It's like I'm you. never going to play any of the fantasy stars because I'm never going to play. I'm never going to make it to the. <laughs> Nah, you can do it. You can do it. I don't know, man. I got a life to live. Uh, this one, I don't think it fetches a ton of money, but it's awesome. It's Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles. Mm-hmm. Pretty good sweet. game. It's got Rondo in there and stuff like that. Um, I like this one a lot. It, it actually, it has a good memory for me. Weirdly, I guess. So to get to bring it down, um, to bring it down real far, my, when my mom passed away. There's a lot of car rides. I live like an hour and a half from where I grew up, so there was like days I had to go down and back, down and back, funerals, all this stuff, organizing stuff. And my wife drove because I was in no state. To, I didn't really want to drive. So I remember just, I just played my PSP in the car, like a like an eight-year-old mm. kid going to the beach. I just didn't want to think about anything. But I ran through this and both of these, like this entire disc, like almost 100%. It's the first time I'd ever like sunk so much attention into something, which is because I didn't want to think about mm. anything else. And uh, I don't know, and now it holds a special place in my heart because it kind of babysat me in a bad time. So I just, I'll just hold on to this forever. It's pretty pretty neat. It's a fun ga- uh, fun set of games all together. You know, you got Symphony of the Night and Rondo on there. What a great compilation. I'm really surprised this isn't worth like a million dollars right now given the prices of Castlevania stuff, but we'll see. I know. We will see. I mean, that's a, that's a great story. When you, when you look at that or when you pop it in, does that, does it bum you out a little bit? Like, does it bring up some of those memories or is it more like a you know like a comforting item like a safety blanket uh, i don't know i think it just it kind of takes me close to the time when i was when i saw her last and i don't know it's kind of a memory like that i don't know yeah it's a good i mean it's a good uh, good question yeah it's not a sour uh, recollection it's definitely good so uh again it's uh pacified me which was what i needed i i mean the details aside, stuff like that is, I think, why having a physical collection can be so important. Like I, for sure, the 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 memories you can tie to the objects are what makes the objects valuable, right? I mean, hundred percent, hundred percent. You got anything else? Oh yeah, we got uh, Hammer and Hero. I got no heartwarming story for this one. It's just a Make obscure, cool game by Atlas. Pretty fun, Atlas. pretty easy. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I just love a good exclusive too, right? Yeah. Like it, in a world where everything gets ported to everything else, else, it's just nice to see just a random one-off game for the PSP. And, uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty fun game. Nice. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. It's a good. Yeah. The, the last thing I'm going to show here, these are, I'm pretty sure I got these from Musty Hobbit too. I got, I got most of my collection from like four different people. I just I find people that have good stuff and then I bug them until they give me everything they have. <laughs> uh, I have to. I mean, somebody asked. Or, oops, I just dropped it on my keyboard. Somebody asked earlier about UMDs. These mm-hmm. only ones I have, and I have to have these. These are beavis and butt. I gotta have my <laughs> beav and my butt. I gotta have it. God, stupid clear. Um, you know, raised raised on the beav and the butt. Love it. So having these <laughs> UMDs is great. I've watched through these like four or five times uh, on the PSP just to just to do it i have i could watch these a hundred different ways on bigger screens but having these man it's, it's fantastic so I, i'm really glad to hear that you actually watched them on psp too i had to That's... i had to soak it in see what it was all about when i first got my psp i remember thinking it was just so novel that i could download music videos and put music videos onto my psp so I would put all kinds of music videos on and I'd bring my PSP to, to high school and just be like, look at the technology. This is, you know, back then it wasn't like, uh, the, this was before the smartphone boom. This was even before, like right around the iPod video era. So the idea of playing a video portably was still kind of novel. And I, I did all kinds of that stuff. Yeah. Good times. Good times. All right. So my, my, my last thing to show here is, is the trilogy. And these are my biggest boys on the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is... Persona 1, 2, 3. These got real expensive. Again, these are another uh, Castlevania-type popular games that got real, real pricey. But thankfully, I bought all of them as they came out because I wanted to play them. I do have the like uh, collector's editions for 1 and 2 that came out with the soundtracks and stuff. So 
Uh, I've played a little bit of Persona 1. It's pretty fun. Haven't played Persona 2 yet because it didn't be Persona 1. And Persona 3 I had already played on PS2, but this uh, this version's open because this is the version that eventual Nits in the chat played oh. and made her way through. So, yeah, these, these, these games got real pricey out of nowhere. Very surprising to me, but... Uh, yeah, very cool. And All then right. I got just one thing I'm looking for. I, d- I forgot to mention this as I was showing them, but I got I got a complain. I know you'll understand. All right, the man. one PSP game I wish I had more than anything else is East Oath and Felgana. I that I don't have that one, and here's why. One, it, it's a good game and I want to play it. But two, I'm constantly reminded that I don't have it because these spines form uh, East, uh. but. <laughs> but there's something missing in the middle there. Oh man. I don't have the 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 third one to complete that spine. So we got to get that one at some point to fill in that collection, but uh it, it got pricey. Bastard. Oh, that's rough. That's rough. Yeah. Do you, have you thought about maybe just uh, getting a little fake cartridge or a fake uh, case <laughs> printing out your own artwork just to fill it in there so you don't you know so bothered by it? I don't know. Nah, don't know. we'll 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 track it down at some point. It's always good to have goals, right? Yeah. Are we moving to the Vita? I think we're going to Vita. Let's crank through that Vita because then in this last day, I'm excited for the weird that's coming up at the end. Yeah, let's. I'll uh, I'll just show you kind of the highlights of Vita. Do you have Vita? No, I really want a Vita, and I really Uh, wanted one before the price shot way way up. But yeah, I really want one. All right. We'll we'll just touch on the highlights here. All right. That's cool. My spendiest boys on the Vita. The spendy boys on the Vita. We've got uh, a couple of good Vita uh, limited run games in here. Some random stuff. So I will say when it comes to collecting for the Vita, I have a lot. I love the Vita. It's one of my favorite handhelds. Probably second to DS and maybe maybe third to DS and Game Boy Advance. Um, But I have 230 Vita games. Whoa. Which happened kind of accidentally and i almost own half of the entire vita library so i tease the idea of do i want to go for a full vita collection i don't know i have all the limited run vita games um and i just bought them all stop coming you know they, they can come out forever well the vita ones on on uh from limited run are done with the exception of super meat boy that's the only oh vita game that they've announced but hasn't been released through them yet and they teased that if you had all the vita games from them that they were going to produce like a bonus one that only people with full collections could get i don't know if that'll actually happen but because i own half the vita games i'm like well gosh i own half and i've got all the limited run ones i i'm kind of halfway there so more than halfway there probably cost wise so who knows maybe i will slowly over time go for that i i'm not really a complete collector but i kind of love the vita so much it'd be a cool way to honor it uh but we got salt and sanctuary cool like 2d souls style game uh and I, some of these i've played digitally some of these i have played on other consoles so not not all of them have been cracked open We've got rose in the twilight this was a nippon ichi uh, web store exclusive i think that you can only download or buy through their web store wow we've got we were just talking about this one not long ago persona 4 golden mm. this one is just spendy because everyone wants to play this version it's the best version of persona 4 uh we've got mary skelter nightmares which is like a dungeon crawler first person dungeon crawler that is randomly very pricey i mean Vita stuff has gone up, so a lot of this stuff is kind of pricey. But then we've got the big boy. Well, there's there's more expensive boys, but this is the one that everyone thinks of. We've got the Breach and Clear. Okay. But wait, we've got two Breach and Clears. Why? How, now, how in the hell did you get <laughs> two of them? So, uh, I bought the one just when they released it through their site. And then, sometime later, there was someone on twitter who and sadly he's passed away but his name was michael cunningham he worked for the website rpg gamer rp gamer and he was a huge handheld gaming enthusiast and so he was always like you know really positive and upbeat and pushing limited run stuff and he had a hashtag that was very popular called hashtag team handheld on twitter and i followed him and we talked on twitter a few times 
and he did a contest with limited run where he said we're giving away two copies of breach and clear to members of the like hashtag team handheld community to be entered take a picture of your handheld collection however you want to we're going to pick two winners we will pick one randomly and one that is uh one of our favorite collection or our Mm -hmm. favorite collection pick so I took all my handheld games, game boxed Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS, everything I owned handheld. And I cleared all the furniture out of my living room except for a couch. And I, in piles of handheld games, spelled out hashtag team handheld. And Whoa. that covered the entire like size of my living room. And then I what stood on my couch to get an aerial view and, and took a picture of that. And they... You have to like take the roof off your house to get all of those to go up in the... <laughs> basically yeah but they they picked that picture and i won huh. so Congrats. uh i was sent a free copy of it and i've always just kind of held on to it because because it's a real collectible game it's like at some point i can maybe trade it off but then also when he passed away when he lost his fight mm-hmm. to cancer it like started to i didn't know him personally or anything but it's just like a little piece of uh, yeah. his memory from that contest yeah sure so I just kind of keep both around, and who knows the fate? Maybe I'll hang on to that one and trade off the one that I've opened and played um, at some okay. point. Yeah. But I mean, as but, a collector, uh, we're yeah. highly sentimental, so those pieces they stay. Yeah, exactly. And then this is a real random one. This is just like a value shock. Uh, I don't. I used to in the, like the PS3 era be kind of into collector's editions, and I'm not so much anymore. Uh, but this is one that we randomly bought. Uh, I think that Leah and I just thought it looked cool. It's Arno Sergei Plus. Uh, and I just for this uh, showcase, I went and looked this one up. This is like a $600 collector's edition. And it's just a Vita game and a, like a cloth map and a soundtrack. Whoa. So I guess sometimes your collector's editions shoot up in value i was extremely surprised because nobody talks about that game nobody cares about it i was like wow that's uh yeah wow so is that the uh is that the white whale in the system what's the most expensive thing out there was it breach and clear breach and clear that or um so there were two games and i would love to have them a thousand and one spikes and vvvvvv Mm. Both of those, the the Nicholas uh, web store said they were going to release versions of, and they never did, or they haven't yet, and it's been several years. But some like pre-production copies of those leaked and and were sold. So if you can get those pre-production copies of those two games, they those go for like touching on a thousand dollars each. But in terms of like things that have officially come out at retail, yeah, those are the the white whales, I think. And again, all these have just been bought because I'm a big fan of the system as they came out. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll get a Vita, man. I really want one. It's It's been... Like, I don't have a 3DS either, but I have I used to really want a 3DS. I've ranked Vita ahead of that for the last bit. Just not haven't been mm-hmm. or haven't taken a, a, a stab at buying one. But prices, we've talked, we've brought up that word a few times tonight. It's uh, becoming yeah. more and more <laughs> difficult to find a price you're happy with on that kind of stuff. So, um... Any other Vita stuff? You got any other weird? Are we ready to get weird? No, I think we're ready to show some of the weird consoles. Weird systems. I can't wait. I cannot I cannot <laughs> freaking wait. So the, the good news is you have each one of these because I can't seem to get your pictures to show anymore. But you have each one of these like nearby, right? Yeah, I can I can grab each of them for you. Okay, great. So, so Yeah. Lead lead us through this. I was going to say, so let's start with the CDI because that one is a bait and switch. <laughs> what, does, what are you doing? I'm going to show you my whole CDI collection. Uh, there it is. Hey, Tetris. All right. Tetris on the CDI. I don't actually own a CDI. The, these other weird weirds I do own. You don't but, have a CDI? I was excited to see a CDI in the flesh, in the plasticky mm, flesh. Nope. I tried to temper your expectations many times, but, but you ran away excited. I keep this game around. I bought, I found this at a thrift store. It was just mixed in with CDs, like music CDs. Uh-huh. And 
I I have wanted a CDI for a long time, and for a long time I didn't like add this to my collection. I kept it in a closet because like well, I don't have a CDI, so it's not part of my collection. But now I consider it part of my collection because it's my motivation to get a CDI, and it's my only game that I have for a console I don't own. Are there any games that you don't have the actual console for? Technically, but you I, own the game. Technically, I do have NCAA Basketball 2006 for the PS3 somewhere in my house. <laughs> I don't count it in my uh, collection because I'm not even sure where it is. <laughs> and I don't have the system and it's a sports game. Um, so kind of. But yeah, so but a CDI. So that's interesting. Um, for some reason, I thought you had a CDI, but I also want a CDI. But we talked about this on a podcast, uh, Polyka Podcast, which you can see right over there. Or sorry, right over there, polymedianetwork.com. You can check it out. Um, you, we both want it because we're, even though we know the Zelda games are ass, we, we're still morbidly curious yep. to get our hands on them. So. And that's the, kind of the big stuff everybody wants. I, there's yeah. other stuff like Little Devil and some other things that look interesting, but I'd love to have those Zelda games. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to be really cost prohibitive, prohibitive before we get a hold of them, but hey, uh, what, yep. what are dreams for, you know? Besides <laughs> so making true. you sad. So there, there was the CDI, folks. Well, wow. hope you didn't blink. And miss hey, oh, I, I always blink. Oh. But hey, Top Spot, you beat me on a, you beat me on a console. Way to go! But do you beat me on any consoles that I actually own? Because here's one that I own, but I only have one game for. I can't wait to see this. My friends, let me introduce you to the Tiger R Zone. Tiger, Tiger, known for making some of the best <laughs> video game. So I wonder if I can get it. It's it's probably not the right size, but the idea is you strap this puppy over your head and you look into this mirror, which is reflecting the game Mm -hmm. off of these little cards. And if I pull the game cart out here, you can see the one game that I own. They're kind of wedged in there. Hey, Ness Addict, how's it going, man? So the one game I have. You can put the R R zone, get your T zone. Really oily, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and so I have played it a couple times. It, it works pretty well. It's, I mean, it's it's Tiger, right? So yeah. you you have a GameCom. You're familiar with that. And <laughs> it's the same sort of level of quality. One one mark down, maybe halfway between a GameCom and just a proper Tiger handheld. Show sure that game again. Um, what game you got there again? We've got Virtua Fighter 2. Oh, the second Virtua Fighter. Oh, man, just amazing yep. stuff. Uh, but I actually, there's not a lot of people know this, but there's two other versions of the R Zone. There's a handheld version that just looks like kind of a, it, it almost is in the same format as this controller, but just a little bit bigger. And the games pop in the top and it plays more like a traditional handheld. Um, oh, I can put this game into my cartridge storage in the top of the controller. Oh, that, then that's just for storage. That doesn't do anything. Yeah, apparently that's. I mean, just like with the the GameCom, they always want you to have a spot to store your extra games. It would seem. Um. But yeah, so there's a handheld one that I want, but the one that I really want is there is a version of the R Zone. It's called the Super Screen, and it's like a small tabletop arcade, like you know those little like tabletop Pac-Man machines mm-hmm. that you can buy. Uh, it's like one of those that has like a little arcade stick and little buttons. And that one would be perfect because I could have that one sitting on the tabletop, point a webcam at it, and I could stream it the way I did the the GameCom. That would be cool, so, man. So one day I really hope to track one of those down, but uh, I just haven't haven't popped on one yet. But yeah, yeah you it's know, my, it's funny my when, one R Zone game. Yeah, in uh, in preparation for this, I was like, how much is an R Zone going for? Can I get an R Zone? <laughs> you don't really see them on eBay anymore. They're not. People aren't just. There's not just a, a whole market of R zones going around. No, and the games don't show up because people don't really care about the, the R zone. But I mean, Tiger had all these licenses, so there's a lot of popular games, right? There's Batman games, Mortal Kombat games. There's mm-hmm. the licensed Apollo 13 game on the Tiger R zone. Wow. Um, the one I want most that a lot of people want most is there's a uh, Panzer Dragoon for the R zone. So whoa, it's. It's a cool system. I I bought this one just kind of like wanting to check it out on a novelty a long time ago, and I've never dug into the library because I never really had much opportunity to play it. But that's why I want the tabletop version because I think streaming it would make me dig a little deeper and give it a little harder look. Sure. Cool. 
Heck I'm yeah. excited to see the R zone, man. So that fits right over the old face. Is it tight? Uh, I mean, you got that adjustable strap, buddy. Yeah. It's as tight as you want it to be. When you compare that to your PSVR, which is more comfortable? Uh, probably the R zone, to be honest. It only goes <laughs> over one eye, and PSVR doesn't have my glasses in there. That's right. Can you use the glasses with the R zone? Uh, yeah, because you have enough adjustment oh, to where okay. you can point that last thing away. That's good. All right. All right. So let's, so let's show, some other, let's show you some yeah. other collections. Some other weird, weird. Yeah, get weird, but get weirder if you can. Let me show you my favorite DVD player. That's just a DVD player. Now, I know you would think that, but what if I pointed you <gasps> towards this Nuon logo? Nuon. Hey oh, man. So this. Uh, this to Samsung Nuon. It is a combo DVD player and game console. Uh, and I have a small handful of games. I will show you them all because did it's you a small enough. Did you purpose or did you just have a DVD player and you're like, well, we got a, you know, it turns out we got a new one here. <laughs> I wanted one, uh, but I didn't want to buy one on eBay because the shipping is rough. And I eventually got lucky and found one at a thrift store and they thought it was a DVD player. I think that's how most people get their new ones. I got to keep an eye out for the, I, you know, I didn't even know the new one existed until I, we were, I was like, what consoles do you have? And you said, I have a new one. I was like, no, you don't. That's not a thing you have. That's not a thing anybody has. Uh, the new one's pretty cool. So the problem with the new one, and I face this problem too. One, the games are all very spendy now because they're so obscure that only people willing to pay dumb money for novelties are going to, to buy them. But the controllers that so you can use a DVD style remote and it works, but there are controllers like there's one that looks exactly like an N64 controller. Uh, and mm -hmm. there's there's a two or three other controller variations, but they're very expensive, like two to three hundred dollars per controller. And so I've never actually picked one up, but Weird. I have four games for it. Uh, we got Ballistic. Which is sort of the most common game. It's like a, this ball style puzzle game. Uh, this one I got. This one and the next one I'll show. Uh, I got them both at a thrift store. And they were just, you know, in with the other DVDs. Different thrift store. A year or so after, I got the actual new one. Yeah. So The other one's free fall. What's the... Uh... What era is this? Like, what what graphics are we getting out of this? Is this? Uh, early, early these are aughts? like I think two thousand five or so. Mid aughts. Okay. That might be a little earlier than that. Interesting. Um, uh, right Spot around asks... two thousand, I think. Oh, that early. Top Spot asks uh, if you own any new on enhanced DVDs oh, yeah. that you know of. Is I do not own any new on enhanced DVDs. Yeah, there are there are actual DVD movies that have like new on enhancements, like menus and stuff. Oh. Interesting. But no, I don't have any of those. Mm -hmm. Just these just these four games. So yeah, free fall is literally what it sounds like. You are free falling. It's like a cyberpunky future world and you are just skydiving down. Does it have Tom Petty on the soundtrack? <laughs> not not as far as I got, but no. uh m maybe someday if you play it hard enough and, and long enough, you'll get some Tom Petty. <laughs> I'd love to. Uh, and then I, I bought this one. I got it on Amazon for like $10 because I wanted something for the new one, and that's Merlin Racing. This one I'm really excited to try. I actually haven't yet because I didn't realize it was sealed and I haven't opened it yet. But it's like a kart racer, very much like you know Diddy Kong Racing style graphics yeah. on the new one. I want a controller for this one, though. Yeah, I was going to add. Yeah. So, I mean, have you shopped around for controllers? Or are they expensive, hard to get? Hard, probably I've hard forever had eBay saved searches for them and they come up every so often and i always hope i'm gonna catch a cheap auction because it's obscure enough where you could see an auction going up and people not paying attention for seven days yeah, but sure. uh, it, it just hasn't happened yet they always shoot up in price so i mean do they always come with the uh, the new one itself is it hard to get the controllers by themselves it's gotta be right hmm You'd be surprised. They they usually show up separately. I'd say every now and again one does show up with the new one though. Huh. Um, and and I've considered like, oh, do I just buy a lot, keep the controller, sell the new one back? But ugh, do I want to ship a new one? I do not want to ship a new one. Give me a new one, buddy. If you come across a bundled new one, <laughs> let's split it. I'll, I'll take I'll take the meat of the uh, the shipping for that new one. I gotta have one, man. 
Plus, I need a way to play DVDs. I mean, it's not like I have a uh, PS2 or an Xbox or anything else that can. You know. I mean, it's... I'll, I'll ship one to you, buddy. What better... It, you thought the PS2 was the best way to play DVDs? It's the new one. <laughs> Um, and then the last game I have, this is actually, this just came out within the last few months. This is Iron Soldier 3. So this game was a really, really obscure, very pricey, hard to come by game on the new one. And this company Songbird, like, re basically, I think they acquired the rights and they, they republished it. So someone released a new one game in, in 2020. Wow. Uh, and this is like a mech warrior style game. Yeah, because so. I have Iron Soldier on the Jaguar, so this is interesting. Yep, uh, and the the new one library is pretty small. This is one of those where like I could realistically consider getting a full collection because there's so few games. Yeah. Um, the game that everyone most wants with their new one is there's an exclusive version of Tempest, Tempest Three Thousand that only came out on the new one so that's kind of like the big one that i don't have that i would like to have is uh, i'd like to try that that version of tempest tempest always finds its way into some obscure rare scenario like with the jaguar it's like that version mm-hmm. is supposedly the best and yeah that's uh, weird thankfully I where, have that version. we'll get to that one where obscure goes tempest follows for sure man i'm surprised there's not a tempest on the r zone you can never be too sure. You can never be too sure. All right, I got uh, All right, got one more one more for you. You want to see one more? I want to see one more, folks. This is going to be the last one. If you're rubbing your eyes and you're like, when are these guys going to stop showing stuff? This is going to be the last one this time. So, and, and this one's going to be one that we've all heard of. But I'm really not that familiar with it to know if I could pick it out of a lineup if it had its logo missing. All right, we got Get it. Get back over here, Steve. Get back over here. I, I said it right at the edge of my uh, my headphone cord <laughs> reach, <laughs> but uh, our our last one that we're going to show today is the Wonder Swan. This is oh, the that Swan is Crystal. Way smaller than I thought it was going to be. Holy crap! Little little, little yellowed on the back, but uh, yeah. Wow, this is tiny. the kind of most desirable version of the the console. It's got the nicest screen and everything, but really cool uh, Japanese only handheld and got a small collection of games here this is one that there a lot of the games on this uh are like rpgs that are really hard to to play because they're all in japanese Mm. but there are ports of like the original final fantasies are on there um there's tons of like licensed anime games digimon games stuff like that but um we have i'm trying to remember the exact name of this it's like want to be street dancer this is a ddr clone Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so it's a DDR style game. Plays a little bit kind of like DDR meets like Parappa. Gotta we have that. SD Gundam Operation UC. This is a really cool side scrolling shoot 'em up. That looks cool. Very, very neat. Uh, I'm trying to remember the exact name of this game. It's it's Rhyme Rider Karaoken, I think. Um, this is another rhythm game. Uh, made by, uh, I think the same people that made Carap- uh, Parappa, but it's got this cool like flip top box that opens up. That is neat. Very, very neat. I like that. And then the main game I really wanted the Wonder Swan for is Klonoa Moonlight Museum. Of course. This is a side-scrolling 2D Klonoa game, and I'm a big fan of that franchise. So this was the a real exciting one for me to get and there's still plenty of games i want for the system there's some real pricey ones i think the two that people really like to go for are dicing night period and judgment silver sword um Fun judgment silver sword being a shoot 'em up dicing night period is like a roguelike dungeon crawler weird cool i don't i would not know a wonder swan screenshot if you threw it in front of my face <laughs> i don't i know very little about the wonder swan i just know it's it's easy to make fun of and uh, fun to say. So there's multiple versions of the Wonder Swan you alluded to there. Do any get bigger? Mm, uh, I can't remember if the other ones are slightly bigger. They might be. Um, but there's the the regular Wonder Swan, which is black and white. Then there's the Wonder Swan color, and then there's the Swan Crystal, which is like a higher density screen, the, the latest model that came out. 
Topspot asks, is there an official DDR Wonderswan game? Uh, I don't remember if there's a DDR one. There's a Beat Mania one that you might be thinking of. But, uh, but yeah, like, like Topspot says here, you can play it uh, portrait style, and some games will also oh. be vertical, and you can play them in vertical mode as well. So that's that's, cool. it's designed to be flipped like that. So you said the first one was black and white, and then the other iterations had color. Are, are there games that are only black and white? Yeah, it's very similar to the game to the Game, game Boy, Boy. Okay. Um, huh. where some of them are black and white. So, like, a good example is Klonoa Moonlight Museum versus Rhyme Rider. If you look, there's it just says Wonder Swan right here, but here it says Wonder Swan Color. It has a little color logo. So just like Game Boy and Game Boy Color, there are some. But uh, So the Klonoa game is in black and white? Yep, it's a, that's a black and white boy. Oh, I see. Okay. Interesting. Real fun game, too. Yeah. Well, thanks uh, for showing all that off, man. You have a lot of hey, really cool th- stuff. Thanks for showing off all the stuff you did. Well, Sony Sony's going to be my lighter, even though I'm a I'm a big fan of the Sony stuff. Um, I'm not as as I have not been collecting as hard as you have for for as long. So, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I do have some cool stuff, but I don't you know I don't know that I'll ever get into the PS3. I can see myself going hard into PSP and maybe a little bit into PS4. I'd love to get a Vita. And uh, I've, you can't hang around anybody that owns a Vita and not be told that you also need one. I have like two or three mm. friends that all have Vitas. And they're like, dude, you got to get a Vita, dude. I'm like, <laughs> I know. I know. I do. It's like, good. Yeah, I'd like to have one. Um, but yeah, all that weird stuff, you know, of the four you showed, which one of those is the best? I mean, is it the Wonder Swan? Uh, I think the Wonder Swan is the best, like in terms of actual games. What one makes my heart sing the most? Probably the new one, just because it's like that perfect combo of dumb but also kind of fun. Yeah, uh, I love the new one a lot, and I I can't speak too much for the CDI. I'd like to uh, pick one up and explore that library someday. I'm really curious about the R zone, just the way it works. Like the some engineering part of me is like I just want to <laughs> like hold it and look at it and turn it on and off a few times. Maybe not play it, <laughs> but I just want to. I just want to piddle with it. Seems neat. Yeah, it really does. And again, with those different models, it's like however you want to play the R Zone, you can. Heck yeah, man. I mean, how interesting <laughs> is that? There's like a, a near VR version and then just a handheld version. It seems so de- and it's weird. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for hanging out. We really appreciate it. I might hang out for another five minutes and chat if you'd like. But um, yeah. But Steve, you're not. You don't have to if you don't want. If you got to go to bed. Up there, in Minnesota. No. If you're tired, you can leave. I'll hang out for a few minutes. Say say hi and bye to everyone. Unless you are trying to boot me off because you want to make fun of me, in which case I'll leave. I want to I want to be private with the with the remaining people. If I could get you to step out. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, uh, Ines Attic, for stopping by. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, see, Frantic finally showed up at the right time. It started at eight. Gosh, I can't tell him <laughs> anything. He, he moved and he changed time zones. Now he doesn't know what time it is. Yeah, he's all confused. Yeah, man. Uh, no, not next Sunday. Um, it will be on the 20th. Uh, where every other... So typically, at 8 o'clock, every other Sunday, Steve and I record a Polykill together, which comes out on Tuesday. You can go to polymedianetwork.com every other Tuesday listen to that. So on those Tuesdays where it says every other Tuesday every other Sunday we're not recording a polykill and that's where we're fitting these in here so it'll be a week a week after next we'll be back and uh, what's that one going to be I forgot maybe we can tease that a little bit yeah we have uh, in our next one we'll be talking about oh where did that go I lost I, uh, my list it was formatting weird and making me mad and I think I moved it but I have the spreadsheet give me a second um Next one is going to be oh we're doing Genesis or we're doing Sega and and uh, Microsoft so we'll have uh, Master System Genesis 32x Sega CD Sega Saturn Dreamcast Game Gear Xbox Xbox 360 a little bit of Xbox One uh, 3DO Engage Giz- Gizmondo <laughs> Gizmondo Gizmondo <laughs> I've never known honestly and a little bit of PC and I don't have much there worth showing but I have a few big boxes I might toss out but. Um, I've got at least one PC thing I know you're gonna want to see, but I'm not gonna cool. not gonna give her up yet. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, so please, um, <laughs> totally of subject. Did Alex get a switch? 
Terrence, not yet. We we, we will continue <laughs> to, to bug Alex until he gets a Switch. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, next time a lot of Sega, a lot of Microsoft. So I'm, and that's where I'm, I'm going to come in a little stronger on that episode for sure. But I think um, you know for today's stuff, the PS ones where my heart is. I think that's, that's where yeah. Most of PS, my good PS one and two. Yeah, most of my collection collecting energy has gone into the one for for sure recently. Mm. So uh, it's, I'm just curious about it. It's the final frontier. Mm. I mean, even if it's not one of them that we talked about today, is there any one system right now that your sights are kind of pointed on? Like, is there something that you're actively hunting or just like you find yourself in your heart on eBay or on a game store's website being a little more interested to flip through the selection for? Like, just like the catalog of games? Like, what's, you know? Yeah, yeah I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking for NES stuff. That's going to be our last episode because that's my... I'm reserving the, the NES friend for the final, you know, it makes sense yep. to send that one out last. Um, honestly, I think it's the P I think I think it's the PS1 right now. I think I'm still just digging I love anytime I go to a game store's website, I look at NES N64, because those are the ones that I'm collecting sort of hard on. And I immediately just yeah. click over to PS1 and I'm like, what's weird in here? What can I get <laughs> for seven bucks? Sometimes it's shipwreckers without a, the manual cover, and sometimes it's it's virtual sea months, man. Yeah. You gotta get that stuff. I mean, awesome. so much. And there's still affordable stuff on that system, which is not necessarily true of everything. So, yeah. I mean, um, the big stuff's getting big, like but there's a lot of forgotten games in that line. Yeah. It's no Saturn, you know, where the big stuff got huge and then the small stuff got big. The PS1 at least still has some small stuff out there. Yeah. You can still get a handful of games for, for 30 bucks if you're careful. Uh, hey, it's LHC Greg. Hey, man, what's going on? Streets of Rage 3 will definitely make an appearance. He just sold <laughs> me the uh, the most sad orphan Streets of Rage 3, and I'm I'm proud to have it. I'm going to show it off here in a couple weeks. <laughs> hungry Bill said, uh, nice, woo, and he got tired and left. He couldn't even type the whole thing. He was so hungry and tired, he couldn't even type nice work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. thanks, Top Spot. Glad, glad you guys hung out. Um yeah, thank you to everyone who hung out. Yeah, I guess that's... You know, after it was like an hour and a half after PS1, I was like, man, this might go late. But it worked about the way I thought it would. It picked up pace. I think, yeah, the tail end of all those collections are pretty small. And well, well we got Sega and Xbox next time. We'll, fig- we'll figure out if we need to split it up, but uh, I think those will go a little bit quicker too. I certainly am a little more attached to PS1, 2, 3, 4 than I am to my Xbox stuff, for example. I'm, I know Hobbit. <laughs> you ain't no Musty Hobbit. I know okay. Hobbit. Check out Musty. Well, actually, I guess you you would say check out the Xbox or Briefs YouTube channel uh, yes. if you want uh, some good coverage of the original Xbox system and its games. Uh, if you like Nest Friend and Snatch Drunk and Game Boil and all those other system dedicated review channels, Xbox or Briefs is good. We need it. We need to get a, a 3DO guy and a PSP guy. I, I think. I think we need those guys. Who's going to do it? <sighs> Who knows? Who's going to be 3DO bro? We need 3DO bro. <laughs> Step up. Who Who in the chat is going to do it? 3DO bro. What would the PSP guy be? PS please? <laughs> okay. Yeah. PS please. That sounds great. That's a C plus name. So that's free to anyone who wants to take it. Yeah. Yeah. So is 3DO bro. <laughs> just have it you just have that one all right folks well i think i'm going to close it down here so thanks again for hanging out uh we really appreciate it we'll be back in a couple of weeks with uh sega x uh yeah sega xbox uh 3do engage gizmondo or gizmondo i never got my clarification <laughs> You're not going uh to no i'm gonna let you flounder on that all one. all right jizzer gizmondo and uh the pc all right well take care everyone until next time, don't blow a lot of money on an R zone. But blow a little money on an R zone. Thanks again, blow, everyone. Blow a little bit.